lovely world of hello forces. hello hello how is everyone doing today <laughs> i just had a piece of crunch so i'm doing okay well hello <laughs> Fraz. how are you doing I'm doing good, buddy. What about yourself? I'm very good. Just starting up the stream here. And if you guys on chat don't know, we are doing the tournament today. That is why we have started the stream early and why all the hype and spam is going in in chat. But remember, guys, we are on a 30 second delay as always. So just because we I'll be watching chat, but I'll be doing a lot more tournament focused things today, doing a lot of casting on the tournaments and less interaction with chat, partially because, well, the whole event is about this for its tournaments and also there's a 30 second delay which is on top of the already normal delay you get from youtube so it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to interact with things so it looks like just we just want to point out to my guys that what he said is what's going on as well <laughs> indeed let's uh, i believe we're all ready for the first match of the team death match okay let's go it's weird not having b-man here it is a little bit weird, but you know what? I think he's he's going to be watching because I don't think I've ever seen one of these where he's not watching. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I'll just have to bring in the tickling forts and stuff. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Someone needs to make it like uh, a meme or a, an emote about that somehow, just like a feather tickling fort. Okay, I'm going to bring a SFA, isn't it? Yes, there we go. Hey! Indeed. Yeah, right. So it looks like Ooh. we're good to go here. So this is actually something that I was talking about, having a set of, uh, of videos where we would do this kind of third-person perspective, just observer mode, and get to watch the game portray where, you, where it unfold from outside of just my perspective. And I think this is an excellent, excellent way of doing exactly that. Did your uh, English hold you up there? Uh, no, no, English is not <laughs> my uh, English is not my first language. Yeah, we get 50 minutes on the clock. Basically, if the whoever doesn't win, or if there's no sort of main competitor winning, they will then get whoever's done the most damage wins. Indeed. So, uh, At the end uh, of the time limit, the team with the most core HP remaining will be the victors. And in case of a draw, which sometimes happens, usually when my other team has done any core damage at all, then whichever has done more damage base damage overall that would be damage to things like metal armor or wooden struts or other devices like batteries and storages that have been destroyed along the way so we've got a very interesting almost polar opposite type of strategies going on here we've got the left team have went straight for factory and right team are i guess maybe going mortars or missiles uh, oh cannon okay we do it's gonna be to a very... some cannons coming out from team two as well so we've got lasers versus cannons. Which shall win today? Although I've noticed there is a very vast amount of difference in eco right now. Oh yes. It looks like Team 2 is going very strongly for the uh, a very swift rush. They should have the weapons out quicker. Uh, notice they only have three mines. But Team 1 over here does have their technology down. They've got a lot of, Well, honestly... It looks like Team 1's just much, much further ahead. Not all, they've gotten significantly greedier. You can see that they've sold off and redesigned most of their bases, including almost all of their metals, something that uh, Team 2 has not done. And for it, they've managed to keep up and actually get slightly ahead of Team 2. Well, Team 2's otherwise extraordinarily greedy rush. They have Team 1 has more economy, more options, and uh, the only thing they're lacking right now is defenses, but there's many much much further ahead in terms of actually getting weapons out mm -hmm. i can't really tell like uh feel like whoever gets the first shot off and it's if it's the right shot they'll win but because if the cannon if you if they twin shot one of the cores will just go down particular because we've got hanging for if they hit like that top area just underneath where the flak is that will just cap that will just drop that core down indeed but Remember that these players have a lot of experience in this game. These aren't new players. This is one. Of, this is a Forge tournament after all. Now this is a community tournament, so not everyone here is going to be a champion. But these are players that understand things like timings. They understand that they come around the come around the five minute mark. They need to have defenses that can sustain hits from lasers. Sustain hits for multiple lasers, in fact, because this is a two v two. So they should 
prepare themselves by that time, and they've got another minute or so before that time rolls around. Right, so we got uh, top base has got the laser going down, and top base on the right side has got the cannon going down. Indeed. Uh, laser's slightly ahead in timing. Cannon's just behind it. Is the cannon... Which one's got the... Are they both the same amount of build time? They do have the same build time. The only cost... The only difference is in the cost. And for that reason, the cannons typically come out faster, just because you can build more of them or stop them or build them earlier just by virtue of not having to wait for more resources to come out. Should be interesting to see how this goes. Now, it is worth noting that this is in fact a 20 millimeter cannon, which does have a faster build time than the standard, uh, well, standard I completely cannon. didn't notice that. My apologies. As fire beams in 20 millimeters come out a little bit faster, obviously they don't have the same, well, lethal fort destroying potential. But they do offer something that the regular cannons don't. They offer a lot of splash damage and an unmatched, par uh, unparalleled ability to drain the opponent's resources. Well, we might be about to see a little bit of action because that 20 mil is done. Indeed, and they need to be firing it very quickly, especially considering uh, the they have invested to into economy themselves. They need to be doing something to even the odds here, else they're yep, just going to be far behind. Them forever. Oh, here they go. Okay. Uh, ooh. Ooh. Well, this is looking real rough. Oh. Uh oh. That, is it going to go? Is it going to go? Nope. They managed to secure the bottom one down there. Just barely. So team one, very well prepared and well, synchronizing their laser fire. Team two is already outmatched. Is already outgunned. They don't have the same firepower a team one does, and they don't have the economy to keep up for it. So they've got to, uh, got to even the odds with those twenty mils. They have, ooh, oh, oh, oh someone ran out of Not power. enough energy. That would have been a lethal shot. Ooh boy, team two is looking like they're having a real rough time here, guys. They seem to be wanting to try and focus on that bolt forward to try and get rid of it, because then obviously that's going to half the firepower. But team. Two's bottom fort keeps missing. Oh! Oh, that's <laughs> real close. 420 mils. Very, very destructive. Looks like Team One, at least the top player, is just not having it anymore. He's saying, I'm just going to build this out of background bracing. If you want to shoot through my top segments, you you could have it. It's not just not going <laughs> to stop you from doing it. Nothing but background bracing there remaining. Oh. Well, this many the energy shield. shields. Remember, guys, That's... that lasers, while they are extremely effective, by far the most penetrating and damage-dealing weapon in the game, they're the easiest to counter just by virtue of, well, energy shields existing. Uh, now, if there were those 20 mils happened to... Oh, Jesus. Oh, that's going to be a nope. chain reaction. Oh, oh, that was real bad. Oh, there we and go. Ooh. One player eliminated. Looks like Team 2 is yeah, I'm about wondering if... Go see ahead. the 20 mil, see if it hits their factory on the, for the Team 1. Will that blow up the core? No. Uh, tech structures do not have large explosion radiuses at all. Just because I was wondering, because it's like right on top of it? Yes. Now, cannons and plasma, plasma lasers and such have, have quite an effective uh, splash radius, but... Oh! <laughs> oh, that's real bad timing. Oh, oh that's that was going to mean. be. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's gonna be real bad. I feel that that was really, really mean. <laughs> I mean, we got seven and a half coming. minutes left. We are halfway through, and Team One is now. I feel like they're playing with their food. So it appears that uh, Team Two here is running with Scattershot Commander. For those wondering, the Scattershot Commander makes the spread fire on all of their weapons much larger. So that's all these 20 mils will be a bit more inaccurate. But once the commander ability has been activated, then the all the, it, it tightens the spread for the duration of the commander ability. So that actually explains the uh, the choice of the 20 millimeters. Is once the commander ability is activated, then the 20 millimeters become a very precision weapon and actually deal more damage than the regular cannon does and penetration worth of damage once once it's been aligned and the commander ability has been activated that is i'm very surprised that like he's holding on here but not actually placed any additional mines down uh oh there goes his economy 
Oh, Indeed. oh, oh, and oh the fire beam to counter the counter the twenty. Oh, this is gonna be real bad. Yeah, he's he's slowly losing out on the economy game, and just it's falling apart. And his only weapon remaining is a twenty millimeter, which doesn't have that that comeback potential. At least, not nearly as much. It looks like Team One here is having some angling issues. They're having to redesign their bases and such just to be able to fire at Team Two here. Oh, uh, oh! If that just focused on that like laser, that could have been quite devastating there. And... But oh, well, there oh, goes that. There goes the last <laughs> remaining weapon for Team Two. And I mean, has again more. connected to the bottom. Whether or not he's going to be able to hold that means to be seen because, well, team two, team one wants in. They want to come say hi, and they're not bringing team biscuits. Oh yes, remember that he's built out of background bracing, so most weapons will pass through. The exception to this is lasers, meaning that team one can at any point just shoot that, well, connection to to the bottom base and remove anything he has apart from there. That looks like. Team one still they have having energy issues. Power issues. Hello, Shikin. I see you. For those guys Hello. wondering in Hello. chat, uh, I do not intend to be playing today. I have not signed up for this tournament, so I will not be playing. No, I, I asked him, but he was like, "No, Fraz, you you can't aim." <laughs> <laughs> I was no, the first person to shoot down a nuclear cannon. <laughs> What? Uh, is that not? That's another twenty. Uh, ooh, that looked nasty. It is also shut down by an EMP, which is very unfortunate for him. It's just gonna delay, and delaying is not a not a great time for him right now. I suppose he has got like you know four mines going now, so he's got a little bit of a extra bit of mineral income, but I'm not sure that's gonna be enough. But Team 2 is definitely having a lot of energy issues still. That was a thread the needle moment if I ever saw one. Oh yes, and I'm not sure which is worse. <laughs> is the fire the extra fire damage or missing the turbine? <laughs> Looks like Team 1 just needs oh, to focus there fire we go. and there it is. Just as I was saying, they managed to line up that shot. G Team 1 taking it. And they're away! Congratulations, Phoenix and Cronkidator. For their first victory, and they will be moving on. And, well, lovely replay just for everybody to witness the cut down of enemy one. Enemy, enemy two. Oh my god, I can't speak! <laughs> one of these days, we will learn English. What's English? <laughs> well, I don't know, because I certainly can't speak it. I just speak fragilish, you know? Sounds about right to me. Alright guys, so we're going to be going ahead and setting up the next lobby. Give us a moment. Lobby Welcome time. to Tournament Times. And this is the moment where I can actually interact with chat. I was asking if we see Fraz playing. No, unfortunately. Fraz and I will not be participating this time. No. We are just here for commentary and for trying to speak more or less English at each other. Fun fact. I actually, uh, when I get introduced to Incursus, it was actually through my Fort Survival series. Sounds about right. And you won. <laughs> but of course. You demolished... Uh... I've forgotten his name now. Quickscover? How could you forget Quickscover? Yes. I was about to say Quitzer for some reason. <laughs> well, his name is a little bit difficult to pronounce. So yeah, that is, uh, in Curses, I met him through that, and it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool, and in Curses, is, he's got great mannerism and everything, so it's always fantastic to do streams with him. Hey, hey for us. What? Kronk has pulled the lever. No! <laughs> no! Why would you do that? Thank you, Ryuko. Ryoko. I didn't. I'm not gonna be able to pronounce that correct. That is way too many not consonants next to each other. 
I'd also like to just say hello, everybody, and the new followers that have popped up on Twitch. Uh, I hadn't had a chance to because obviously we're in on the castingness. Uh, and Chris is a golf caster, and Fraz is a soccer caster. I mean, I don't even like football. <laughs> All I can think of is the, uh, what is it, the tennis caster. I, what, what was it? I saw, I was watching, I forget, I forget which tournament it was for the tennis tournaments. And uh, I, I don't Maybe. remember which one it was. Maybe it was, I can't remember if it was the US Open. I don't think it was something US because the guy had an accent and had an extraordinarily deep voice. Like, so deep that it was sometimes difficult to understand what he was saying. <laughs> And it was impressive, and I just didn't want to stop watching just to just to hear what the guy was going to say next. I'm getting quite a few follows. Are you doing something in Cursus? <clears throat> no. Something you want to tell me? No. <laughs> it's like I'm every doing two seconds. nothing get at all. To the... Although my follow thing is get to the chopper. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love a little bit of Arnie. So up next we have, I believe it's Genesis team versus. Why the hell do you say that? Warishi? Tourishi? How the heck do you say that? Well, that I don't know, but I have since given up on attempting to interact with the uh, team names because they don't actually have the list of players associated with the team names. They've created the team name and then didn't list the players in the roster. Oh no, neither they did. Okay. So that makes it very difficult for me to cross-reference anything, so I'm just gonna... Just gonna give the teams as Morning. they Your are, or at least the players detected. as they are. We have Wolf and Vitaly versus Lavin and something something. The, la the game has started, guys. So we're going to go ahead and kick this off just as the nuclear launch comes in. So let's go ahead and get yes, this going. Videos here is a little something for you. Do -do 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 -do. Looks All like right, we have quite let's... a large map here and this is going to make for some interesting plays now this map tends to work at least in larger maps tends to work more in favor for the laser so you don't have to worry about the cannon variants and things like swarm missiles become a little bit less common as the larger space that the missiles have to fly across the more time for anti-air in order uh, more time anti-air has to bring it down so it makes missiles not a common choice on this map but they are fully possible but you just have to be extremely on top of your map suppression well Looks you have you have to put it this way like um anybody that i play with considering bg i don't know if he's in the tournament or not as uh usually loves these nukes and he'll put nukes on anyone and then be able to hit anyone with them. Maybe oh, yes. it's just the skills. And that is one thing about nukes. Uh, if you have experience with them and you know how to use them, you can read the opponents very well and make sure that you fire them at the right time in order to get these shots across. Remember that it doesn't matter how large the space is. If the enemy doesn't have the, if the, the opponents doesn't have the ability to shoot down the missiles, then you're going to land a hit. Uh, so speaking of missiles... <laughs> Indeed, it appears that we have one player from each team that is going missiles and one player from each team that is going for lasers. Lasers and missiles, a, uh, a classic combo. Lasers are work very well versus all things that missiles do not. Whether or not they'll see... Oh, because I noticed we've actually got Team 2 very kindly renamed themselves Terrorish Wolf and Terrorish Vitaly. Yes. Vitaly. It's, it's quite convenient. Which is, it's, it's nice. It's, it's good for us. <laughs> Not as like this random person, this random person from this team. I, I was wondering there why the Observer, I was like, why is it say OBS? But I'm using OBS, but then I realized it's Observer. Well done. I, I do good at Forge, apparently. You did it, Fraz. <laughs> So, have you seen any of these players play before, Tall and Curses? Because I know myself, I haven't. Uh, yes, I've seen Laven, I've seen Wolf. I don't remember if I've seen Vital uh, or Shyxos. Oh. Looks like we have the first uh, missile launch they coming have out. No, and, oh, no, there's one anti air, but whether or not it would. No. Oh, oh got no, a couple this is there. Not but... prepared for it. Ooh, oh. Ooh. Oh. 
So remember that, that is... swarm missiles stack kind of exponentially. The first swarm missile just having one launcher isn't enough to break metal, isn't enough to break through wood. But two of them breaks just about one piece of metal, assuming that it assuming that it lands all in one spot, like what happened here. We've got, uh, it seems to me we've got team two actually upgrading one to a nuke, ready to fire. And team one is putting in a laser and a fire beam at the same time, although... If he cannot uh -oh. take that nuke out, he's... He doesn't have anything to buffer, so this nuke is going to cause some serious damage. Oh yeah. Without any Ouch. kind of spaced wooden armor, or anything to detonate the nuke before it actually hits the core of the base, then that's going to deal in a massive amount of damage to everything on the inside. You notice how all of his, he had to repair everything, his core has been taken out, and he actually lost some of his gunners and internal structure there. Here that's comes another problem. one. If they do not get some anti-air, there's nothing to stop that nuke right now, unless he's going to... No. Oh, they're yeah. aiming he's it right losing. at the corner there to try and... Although, Ooh, yeah. that was a good hit though, that was a good sort of fire back there. It was, but without the nuke, then it's only really just taken off a little bit of outside armor. If we notice that top base from player one, from team one here, has gone straight for the laser rush, and I imagine this is part of their plan. They've attempted to use missiles to get rid of anything like energy shields, and then they're going to use the lasers coming out of this player here in order to finish off the base. Yeah, I noticed that team, like, team one's top base has just, like, literally went straight laser, straight fire beam, and, well, that would essentially slice off. Is that a laser shield? That is a, a shield there on top base, but... You know, there is missiles and potentially two nukes coming from the left-hand side. Indeed, it appears that... Ooh, oh, that's going to slice his base off. And that oh. might just be a double kill here. Oh, just barely misses. Colliding at the rear of his base. And that's good. Got decent ish saying why they're using dense wood bracing against nukes. That's a good question, it w but the player that has gone with the dense wooden bracing built it long before the nukes were, long before the nukes um, were fielded. Uh oh. He just took out his own nuke. <laughs> Indeed. It would appear that his <laughs> own weapons, his own anti-air has disabled and destroyed his, his nuclear weapons, which is not, not what we want happening here. It's like, nah, I didn't want that nuke anyway, you know, just let it go. <laughs> so one thing of note, that this uh, missile rushing player for Team 1, the early aggressor, has gone for double nuke, which means that they have double the firepower. A double nuke is a scary, scary weapon set, like don't get me wrong. But it does permit, it's a little bit more risky, it does permit Team 2 to fully defend the nuke without much anti-air required. You know, this is one flak is likely to be able to defend against both nukes. Very, oh, oh or, it actually, or it's just going to go straight across. Here comes the second one. This might be... I am, Oh, there Ooh. we go. Okay. It gets that shut down. down. Okay. But that laser is... Um, it's going to not... That's going to... Oh, never mind. I love how the top base on the Team 2 is just casually burning away. Oh, he's trying. Will that do it? Oh. And this I had the chain reaction from the from the plasma cannon. And it's and gone. There we have team one, which is Lavin and is it Shyox? Indeed. Lavin and Shy. Moving on. Congratulations, Victors. Six the minutes lovely and big explosion. seconds. Ah, That's one thing so that, the actual, that Go ahead. Uh chain reacted. Yes. And it was a laser. Very nicely done. Very nicely done. So one thing that Chad may notice here is that the matches that we're going to see for the tournaments are going to be much, much faster than most that you'll find out in the wild. And that's just because the players are a lot more experienced at fielding weapons and destroying enemy forts. Whereas a lot of matches that you'll see out in the just the randoms will go for 15 minutes or longer. These have a 15 minute time limit just because no one ever gets past 15 minutes. At least it's extraordinarily so, rare. I'm just gonna say, everybody ignore my rank. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do rank gameplay anymore. It's, it's okay for us. No one does. Apparently, some people do. Yeah, that's not true. There, are, there have been some people that have been doing ranked. I actually been, and I actually lost a few ranks uh, recently just from people usurping the higher positions. 
It's all the How same. How very dare they! Good luck for the next challengers. So the teams that we're going to be having coming up are we've got I believe it's Hambrace versus Meme Catchers, whoever they might be. Well, I'm assuming the uh, the Meme Catchers are going to be Romero and Jopocalypse, both players that have done tier threes in previous tournaments and other meme style shenanigans. <laughs> uh, was them? Didn't they almost win a tournament just by just cheesing out missiles? I'm sure. Uh, Joe Apocalypse team did f were the first to go for the missile cheese style rushing, and it didn't work out for them. But it's a legitimate tactic. Romero was one of the players that went for the tier three in the third place match, which. To be fair, has traditionally been a match full of nothing but memes. <laughs> that is a very high ping from Romero. It's Romero. He always has a, a fairly significant ping. I suspect that the uh, the dedicated server here is a bit a bit far from the usual group, which is not a surprise considering the French audience we have here today. Not entirely sure, Tachi, if you'll actually see Tier 3 done. I don't know if... Is there enough time to do it? Tier 3? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you can get a, you can get a solid Tier 3 mortar out in, like, an under six minutes. By far, easily. Like, five and a half. Also, depends on the map. Really. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, a Tier 3 is never a, a good option to do. It's uh, just an option that's possible. Okay, so we got Beef Woman and Burrow Deck. Beef and hmm. Burrow versus Romero and Joe. Let's do this. Let's begin. Uh, Tachi, I'm not even sure. I like Incursus is the one that can do tier free. I just follow him and I usually screw it up and blow up my own core. <laughs> uh, remember, that's the first step of tier three. Blowing up your own core. Learning from your mistakes. <laughs> ah, yes. So when it goes to swing, you just cringe. It's like, please don't fall. That's all. Alrighty. Let us see. So this map could be done. This could be. This map, be yes. Done. This is this is one map where tier threes have have been fielded a fair few times. So we'll, we'll get to... I, I don't think it's going to happen this time because th while these players are very well known for doing things like tier threes and other meme strats, uh, they also want to win. This is very true. I uh, just wanted to bring to your attention, Chris, is I have someone, Tachi, who is just a recent sub of mine. He actually built a tier three Mac cannon. Tier three Mac cannon? Did that come back down? I uh, wait. I'll see what he says, Tachi. If you let us know, because obviously we've got a fair second delay. But yeah, he, he posted a picture of it uh, in my Discord, and I was just like, "What? <laughs> Tier three Mac Cannon? Just, just uh, that would just go straight through your fort." <laughs> well, yes, yes, it would. <laughs> I'm be more interested to know how long it takes to come back down, if it ever does. Oh my bad, I pronounced his name as Tai Shu. Not Tai-Chi. Sorry, Tai-Chu. Does this tournament have tons of guns? Yes. As tons of guns, guns is the Fort's DLC. It is free, and it could be. It comes with the game, and it is possible to disable it, but generally you don't want to do that. Yeah, you want to have fun with guns in this anyway. I realize that that could completely be taken out of contacts. Demonetized in America. Oh well. Or maybe a remonetize in America. Hey. <laughs> so it appears that Team One is going for the same kind of strategy that the previous that the team from last match has gone for, with the one player going the earlier or should I say mid game missile rush and the second player going for the laser rush. And that's gonna make a combo where the lasers could deal most of the damage, but the nukes and the missiles will clear the way for the lasers to do that damage in and of itself. Whereas team two uh, I'm not sure exactly yet. Uh, they've got 
missiles and upgrades, so I'm guessing they're going to go for some sort of nuke on the bottom base, but uh, it seems like the, the back base is a, a little bit behind in regards to, well, it, they've put down an extra, they've got three batteries. It seems a bit overkill. Indeed. Uh, I'm going to venture a guess and say that Team 2 is doing the same thing as Team 1 is, but they're far enough behind that they haven't actually started going down that path just yet. Which is going to be a problem for them, considering Team 2 is just about to start opening fire and blowing away Team 1. Or, sorry, Team 1 is just about to open fire and uh, start blowing away Team 2. And here we go. The first missiles have been launched. And smack in the goo. And now, suddenly, the uh, the forward player from Team 2 downs just a single piece of armor in front of his core. It's it's get a kick off pretty hard here, pretty fast. At least they're reacting this time by building by building any amount of anti-air. Notice we have players started to work out for this, but uh oh, he hasn't braced his base, and suddenly, suddenly, this player's base is just about to start collapsing. That's an extraordinarily red racing there, and it's. Are we going to see a self-base collapse in a forced tour? That is very, tournament? very dangerous. I haven't... Honestly, I, I did not expect a player to be so... Okay, so he, he is trying to balance his weight out. You can see he's building a ballast a counterweight to try to fix it. But it's uh it's looking pretty rough there. I mean, if, it if he keeps applying weight to the front, it's just going to topple over itself. And right into his teammate, potentially. And the snipers are coming out. Oh, that's, that's going to just... They're completely dominating the map control here. It would appear that he's built so far out that it's actually got uh, that the team two player has built far enough out that it's actually gotten in the way of his teammates missiles. Oh, so his teammate yeah. can't actually fire That's... the second missile launcher right now. I mean, you suppose he could fire. It would just hurt. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it would hurt his he's, teammate. He's going to. Oh, did they? No, I don't think he fired. Although, yeah, team one's basically got complete map control. Here comes a nuke. And it's going to hurt a little bit. Oh, Ooh. yeah. Oh, they tried to ignite the nuke at the last moment, um, but it didn't really matter. It just didn't have enough armor to sustain the hit, and he's gone. One player has been eliminated. And now we're sitting here with, uh, well, the last remaining Team 2 player doesn't even have his technology down to start building the weapons. He doesn't have weapons, doesn't have the technology to build the weapons. His defenses are minimal and being reduced and here come the missiles yeah he's just consistently constantly build oh wibble wobble constantly building out um machine gunners but they're just getting sniped repeatedly over and over and over this is what i did back like a year and a half ago how long has forts been out been two years now got it coming up in two years i believe so yes there goes more gunners so they're mm. I feel like the, the strategy of gunners at the front should probably be retired after it being taken out for about the 10th time in a row. He does need another solution here. But hey, at this... least he managed to fix his bracing so he's no longer about to Ooh. collapse. But, oh! <laughs> the incendiary oh, wow. missile combo. Oh, that's good. That's a rough one. Suddenly everything is on fire. And it's, it's looking everything real is on fire. rough. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's that burning, that flaming nuke that we were looking for. Bloody wanted me to tell you he has yeah. Chinese food. What? He has Chinese food. Bloody does. That sounds delicious. I'm actually unreasonably hungry right now, so that all sounds good to me. I had a pizza crunch and chips, so... Oh! oh. Whoa! That was some sort of pain and suffering Ooh. and ouch! <laughs> That I just, was just love the sight, the visual of the laser penetrating all the way through the base as the nuke hits. Just like seeing this, because he, he lit the, the nuke, uh, like all of that on fire, and then they hit, and then the, it just continued. Jeez, that is nice. That was that a was textbook, lovely. beautifully enacted laser and missile combo rush. Good very, job, very team lovely. One. I know this is quite a few Team 1s winning. Can we have a Team 2 winning? Oh, it looks like we get Pyro and Trek Jeff. Oh, that might be a victor. Pyro and Trek Jeff, both previous tournament champions. So we're going to... They're, they're going to be held to a... Team 2 is going to be held to a very high standard this time around.
but it looks like, well, they're facing off against the Team 1 made of Glueflex and... and uh, I... Okay, let me let me read this one for a moment. <laughs> uh, Nuffles of Puffle. There's, there's no L there. I kept trying to put an L there. Nuffigas um, Puffy. Nuffigas Puffy. Nuffigas I'm calling him Puffy. Nuffigas Puffy. Nuffigas Puffy. What is Pyro trying to do? 5v3, really? <laughs> now, that both of these... Big, he's flexing. He's flexing. Both of these players, uh, Glueflex and Puffy, have been on the ranks leaderboard for some time now. I do recognize their names. And they are actually uh, higher ranks at this point than Shark Jeff and Pyro. Yeah, like it's very, very, very close. We're seeing some of the... Because, obviously, you get Trek Jeff at 7, Pyro at 73, but then you get 10 and 15. You know, we've got some very, very high-ranked players in this match, particular proposing maps. Uh, okay, I don't know the... <laughs> Hello, Teenager. How are you doing? That is a very interesting name, the Teenager. Not Teenager, Indeed. but the Teenager. I like it. All right, looks like we're going to be starting off once more. Get these pokies up. So this time, I'm actually, if I were to venture a guess, I would expect Team 2 to come out on top of this one. Now, well, you've just jinxed them. Who knows? Find out next time on Dratton in the main. Uh, it's entirely possible. <laughs> if it was Dragon Ball Z, we wouldn't find it for a month. <laughs> Burn. So we've got Team 2, or uh, Metal Mine, Metal Mine, uh, top bases went with Flak, or I can never mind the things, I just remember the guns it gives you. Armoury. <laughs> that one. And bottom base is when... Fa no, not Factory. Ah! Help me, Curses, you're leaving Workshop. me to drown! <laughs> Workshop. So it looks like the bottom right player for Team 2 here has gone for the Workshop. Now, the Workshop unlocks mortars and swarm missiles, unlike the Armory, which is currently possessed by every other player, unlocks rockets and flak. Now, the Armory, because it unlocks flak, is generally considered a more defensive option. It's great for, well, blowing things out of the sky, such as all the weapons from the Workshop, namely the mortar and the swarm missile. Now, on this map, you notice you don't have a lot of uh, ex exposed uh, space for the foundations that swarms can be placed on. However, there is a spot right down here on this little lip where a swarm missile can be placed. It is a single, single little place and can do a lot of damage, especially when upgraded to a nuke and hit with a surprise attack. But on this map, mortars are quite a common option just because of the verticality. Having mortars coming from the bottom player to hit the top are very difficult to deal with. But it appears that both, well, all players involved are going for some kind of a mid or early-ish game rush. In this case, we're seeing rockets out of Team That's 1 here. That's a lot of rockets. It's a lot of EMPs, and they're with the upgrade center. Well, the they upgrade center is on the way. Up. I mean, uh... Ooh, if Pyro, because I, I saw Pyro's on the bottom. No, is that Pyro? Was that Pyro? I can't tell. Uh, just got a wee fun little snippet for you there, uh, in Chris's bloody decided point out. Everybody else is under 75, and then you have Fraz over 5,000. Sounds about right. Yeah, it's seems another right. normal day. Yeah. So normal this is going to be a, uh, a very quick, quick match. And by that, I mean things are to kick off very quickly. We have, well... A lot of weapons already being fielded, and each player is just waiting for the right moment to strike. Notice that the weapons are already placed. They're just waiting for the other player to expose, or for themselves to be at the ideal alpha strike situation. We've got uh, some missiles going in at the bottom base. There are some swarm missiles. Um, both bases on the left-hand side in Team 1 are built free missiles, and now they're going to sort of upgrade. That's going to hurt. If they get through, I mean, there's one flak at the right hand side. It's not enough to take that many missiles on. What do you think? Mm, so, the rockets that we're going to be seeing, the biggest, well, counter to them is going to be the snipers. 
Keep in mind that while the rockets hurts, they hurt a lot, just one flak is going to be enough, to, well, can take out a single, well, volley of the rockets. Oh, there comes a salvo. And hitting there, now they've, well, oh. Oh dear. Right, looks like they're going to yeah. focus fire. Uh, the bottom player is not going to have enough economies to sustain these kind of hits. They're going to need a little bit more, well, a oh. little bit more anti-air, and they need to be super active with the sniper right now to shut this down long term. Yeah, they need to like, start be taking using hits this. like this. Oh, right, so they saved them salvo from there, but he's really not, he's not using the sniper at all, which is surprising. Did he forget it's there? Got Team 2's up, or his ally actually placing down some gunners in order to try and take him, give him a little bit of support. And indeed, that's Ooh. exactly what he needs to do, and it looks like he's trying to build more snipers, because he knows what he needs to do about it. Uh, but Team 1 is being very oppressive oh. about things. Oh god. That is not going to hold that. Another maybe one or two salvos, if he doesn't get that repair quick enough, that will go down. But I'm very surprised why he hasn't used his sniper, even though they're completely out in the open. Well, it's not out in the open anymore. Oh. Yeah, now you see, this is this is uh, what I was saying. Like, these rockets you see here are completely exposed, can be sniped, but have not oh. been sniped. Oh! Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, nice yeah, shot coming in there uh, from the top base in Team 2, completely removing basically all offensive apart from one rocket. Welcome to secondary explosions. And that's going to give his teammate a little bit of a breathing room, but if he hits that bar right at the back, <laughs> that, that, that's going to hurt. Oh yes, so now it looks like that they, Team 2 has earned themselves a little bit of breathing room. Uh, the rockets are still exposed. And still vulnerable. Uh oh, oh, that's that'll do it. Looks like Team Two has survived, survived the onslaught just long enough. Has fielded far superior firepower, and Team Two, his, the players, just try the to feeling, survive. I get the feeling that that may be Pyro. Uh, yes. He I likes would, his lasers. He does like his lasers. I get the feeling that bottom base though is literally just building out <coughs> sacrificial armor right now, or sacrificial wood to try and just alleviate some of the issue with missiles just now well no it's check jeff it's actually up top never mind huh. same mm. things <laughs> poor pyro getting slaughtered here he has uh definitely taken the role as team tank the one being focused but he's not without his own recourse he has throughout all this managed to develop a nuclear weapon of his own in that same uh, that same slot that i was mentioning before back. and it would appear it's just gonna <laughs> land freely oh. And suddenly, Drunk Nuke! Drunk Nuke for the win! Drunk Nukes are so, so dangerous. Like, they're genuinely, like, a, a sort of nuke you can sort of determine somewhat where it's going and everything, whereas a drunk one, it's just like, where is that going? And it'll just hit something you really need. <laughs> like, of course, your core. And this is what I was talking about. These are extremely experienced players, and despite all of the damage being thrown at him, the bottom player here for Team 1 did manage to not only defend it, get up anti-air, not explode, but he also managed to field a nuclear weapon of his own, and it one-shot the enemy base. All the while under fire from two players worth of rockets. To be fair, I expected really no less from Pyro. Oh, absolutely. And I would be lying if I said I wasn't worried for a moment. But he did pull through. <laughs> I mean, I was the same. I was thinking this if Pyro loses that, like, he will actually kick himself, but... Oh, absolutely. Oh. Momentarily, and there it goes! Boom. Pyro and Check Jeff taking on the win and moving on to the next round. The lovely, lovely... That just, uh, if we could just go back to that nuke area, just find that. That was a great, that was a, wow. And just like seeing this come over and poof, That was everything. a match and a half. That was a really enjoyable match, that is certain for sure. And now we get more people. Of course Pyro would use lasers. Pyro didn't use lasers there, T-Mine actually. It was all Trek Jeff using lasers. Pyro actually used the nuke. It's not cool, but some team deathmatch. I suppose you would, uh, if someone you game with a lot, you're going to end up using the same thing because Pyro does love his lasers. 
but it's definitely see if this is going very well. And it's also, I think, um, when all the players are sitting ready, it's because there has been some Forge tournaments where we're running, it's like it's me and you trying to, as B-Man puts it, rounding up the cats. And that's a good is, way to put it. There's a lot of downtime. But this seems to be, I'm going to touch my desk right now, it's made of wood, seems to be going pretty well. Ah, wants to play Wingman. I used that the gun that's now been nerfed in Apex. Have you used it yet in Cursus? Uh, yeah. I like it. I don't I, like it. I, I don't like it. It's hardly, the change is hardly noticeable, to be honest. I'm thankful that they nerfed Blinking Peacekeeper so it can't be used as a sniper from 400 meters away. It didn't touch the range of the Peacekeeper. It could still, I still reach out. I still one tapped. It was a playing last night. I still one tap someone about 150 meters away from it with it but they had the only thing they nerfed on the peacekeeper was the uh i, I know this is not fort's talk give me a moment guys <laughs> I, I got it i like reading patch notes but no the, so the patch went out like three days ago now i've been playing with it for a while uh, and the peacekeeper didn't have any range nerfs the only thing they nerfed on it was the uh rate of fire yeah the shot the shotgun bolt as well got changed on it a little bit didn't it they reduced the it by about 10 percent I know there's a big change apparently coming when they launch like season one or whatever. Right. I believe we someone has pointed out to me that we have a rank one player in the team. Indeed we do. So that is going to hurt. And it'll be interesting to see, like, you know, rank one, that is in the world we're gonna be having here. So let us Rank 1 Fords player right here on Team 1. Now, I don't know team which one, one of these players is which because we don't have that that technology available to us. So, so, yeah, well, they really need that in. <laughs> uh, I'm not seeing because we need to, one of them to select a gun, but uh, Rank 1 player in the world. Let's see how this goes. This is going to be a... I'm, I'm interested to see this. We've also got Vladimir. You know, Russia's here. You know that? <laughs> With Toffee Player. Vladimir and Toffee Player, both players I've seen around here before. Right, so we got sort of the bases going for almost similar things apart from Team 2's first base. Like everybody's waiting for the same technology apart from Team 2's first one. Guessing he might be preparing for missiles? Oh, that's that's unsure. Uh, we'll see in a moment. Oh, well, we have Team One here going for missiles and lasers, the classic combo. And actually, this has been a pretty consistent combo for the entire entire tournament this time around. Team Two is going to need to do some catching up here. Oh yeah. We notice here that the Team 1 Missile Rusher has actually sold off his workshop, meaning that he can get out his upgrade center that much faster. It actually shaves off a good 20 seconds off the upgrade center uh, resource amassing time. So that'll, that'll get out his weapons that much faster. And that'll be important here as it puts him noticeably ahead of Team 2. So Team 2's Missile Rusher is just putting down his first Swarm Launcher, which is um, a far cry a away bit. from having two down and an upgrade center. See where he's put his factory and upgrade center? I feel like yes. that might be nicked by the missiles. Oh yes, he's definitely going to have to sell those off. I imagine he's going to do that after he puts down a Swarm Launcher and then upgrades it to a nuke. But he's got to do that pretty quickly if he wants to uh, stay competitive here because he's already getting hit by Team 1's missiles. This is going to hurt. Oh, okay, so... Alright, that, that went... He managed to get hit by just one of the Swarm missiles, although the second player is not really taking... It's taking quite a wee bit hit. They lost a windmill, I believe, there? Yes. Uh-oh. Nothing critical, but it's going to be... All right, so the swarm oh. missiles will work. The nuke will not. So he will have to sell it off once he get, once he gets that upgraded to a nuke. Because the nuke has a bit bit wider of a bit wider of a detection angle. A bit wider of a hitbox. 
He's got to be real careful with that. Looks like the team one forward base also selling off the workshop just to get out the just to get out the uh, plasma weapons that much faster. Well, uh oh, it looks like team two here has got a little risky. Decided to place down his first laser before defending it, and it put it out in the open, and it got immediately sniped off by team one. That's going to put him very, very far behind. Lasers are not a cheap investment, especially ones that uh, just get lost instantly. Whoa. Uh -oh. Here comes a nuke. Here comes the first nuke launch. Oh, dear. Oh, oh, he's trying to snipe it, but that's going to hit. That's going to... Ooh, sandbag mostly taking a hit there, actually. Indeed. So this player has managed to build out a bit in front, and it detonated the nuke far enough away from his core that it didn't take any critical damage. In fact, the repair cost, because there's so little metal in the way, is going to be minimal. So he that was a successful defense despite getting hit by the nuke. Now the question here is... Ooh, that, oh, oh. Ooh, that is a very, very close, very close to hitting. He's putting in some sacrificial armor, but oh, close, but no cigar. Almost. Also, Curses, you gotta do something for me. What's that? See, happy birthday to Bloody. It's his birthday today. Happy, happy birthday from all of us to you. Happy, happy <laughs> birthday. A bloody day to you. <laughs> oh, that was brilliant. Although in seeing that we now have a lot of bloody action going on with nukes going left to right. Oh, never mind. Ooh. There goes laser. Looks like laser and just went straight through. Just, just well, blowing clear through what little defenses remained of Team 2's top base. So now we've got these guys here and... Well, I kind of feel like he might be... A little a bit, bit of a disadvantage at this point. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. The nuke that has been ignited. Have... Oh, yeah. Well, there goes. Oh, there we Ooh. go. That was a super quick match. Why? Yeah, that was a. Uh, they Five assisted their own demise in that one. I, I want to see the replays the, here for this. Setting that on fire there, which did not help matters. Heading in there. Ooh. Then the missile's coming through, causing a little bit extra damage. They rub salt in the wound. Then the laser just firing to just end the suffering. That was uh, that was a bit rough. That that looked that looked sore. That looked very sore. Uh, now in curses, I will be back in a second. So uh, please do not uh, scare the people watching. No promises. I'm a very scary Maybe. person. <laughs> that was a beautiful shot. Now, these are the kind of plays that we're here for, guys, and this is... <laughs> this is this is why I like Forge to watch these kind of higher skill plays that just come in and just clean everyone out. This this makes me happy. And yes, I do see you guys in chat. You have five and a half minute game time. I wasn't kidding when I say that these force matches will go very, very quickly. Like most players that you'll see in chat or the comments will be like, I. it takes me seven minutes to get out a cannon. Most of these games will be finished by about the seven minute mark. That's just how fast these weapons can be pulled out. The fire beam just ignites the nuke but doesn't destroy it. So the fire beam does destroy the nuke as it does with the swarm missiles. Uh, the difference is that swarm missiles expire one second after being ignited by a fire beam. And the nuke expires, I believe it's four seconds after being ignited. Now, 
Unfortunately, the nuke travels roughly the distance of every map possible within four seconds. So, unless you're on some hyper modded map where it uh, travels, where the map is just super massive, then it's just it, igniting it at any point is going to cause the nuke to to hit to hit your base while being on fire, which is not something you want to experience. I'm back. Welcome back, for us. Did you scare anybody? Uh, probably. Uh, well, they can just deal with it. Can have their nightmares later on. Ah, uh, yeah. It looks like one of the teams is having some um some scheduling team issues. Team? Indeed. So they'll have another minute or so, and then they will be removed from the removed from the brackets. And it looks like Galactic Pirate and D Tourney may have a buy here. Who is it we are looking for? Let me have a see. Bring up the black the blacket. Apparently, we're bringing up the blacket. That's a that's a good thing. The blacket. It is the oh dear. Shentagonizers the... versus the NACL, or I assume table salt. Sodium chloride. You rub it in the wound and it's going to sting. Is this only being streamed to YouTube? No, in fact, it is being streamed to Twitch, where there is not many viewers, but, you know. It means it's on Twitch. Yes, it is on Twitch. I am both streaming to YouTube and Twitch via the glory that is restream, and also Fraz is streaming on Twitch, so you could check out his view as well. As yes, it appears that the second team NACL has been officially disqualified. Congratulations on receiving your buy. So we'll be moving on to the full force rockets versus the suicide bombers. Let's get them in here real quick. If they're there. <laughs> if they are present, yes. And this will be the second to last match of the round one matches. How do you so see you the any... bracket? Actually, we I didn't go around showing the bracket to everyone, but we I could I could do that real quick. Uh, let me go ahead and while we wait for uh, let me go ahead and make an OBS overlay for it. Do, 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 do. Where is my do, 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 do. I've just brought mine up here so everybody can see what's going on. I'm going to make a web page and I'm going to embed it. You know, I like to make a web page. What have I told you about making web pages? You can't stop me. No. I can watch one more match and then off. Don't worry, Taishu. There will be you know vods and stuff for this because we'll get it out. Mine will be slightly delayed though because Twitch doesn't like things going on YouTube for 24 hours. Yes, that is. I feel it. Unfortunate. But, but it, it is happens. what it is. It happens. All right, let me go Why would you want to know who wins when you could just watch who wins? Maha! Zoom in. Zoom in. Why do I gotta zoom in? Hi. Zoom in. I can't actually zoom in. Oh, we could actually do this, I suppose. Oh, or not. That didn't actually work. Control. Right, do, do. There we go. There's a lovely bracket for you. There's the bracket. Uh, Looks like it's a bit low. So we've got these guys, uh, these, this team didn't show up, so they've got by. We've got Full Force Rockets versus Suicide Bombers. It's going to bring them back out to the normal area. I th and the reason I wasn't bothering so much with the uh, bracket is that the, uh, well, the bracket is, um, it, it doesn't, it has the team names, but it doesn't have the player names in it, which makes it a little bit difficult to uh, translate everything. Hello there, race team. I am doing well. How is yourself? Yeah, we'd be prefer to have the team name members. Uh, I know it's on the Discord, but I only have so many screens. <laughs> See if I could fix up the web page real quick. 
seems to come with ads and other unpleasantries. All right, looks like we may be about to go with the next one. Hello, Shkin. Let's see if that is... We've got a Tonex and Birch, or S. Birch. The Steam name is meant to match his Discord name. All right, so it does seem to be... Oh, wow. There are some large pings. Oh, yeah. That's, that's uh... rough. I'll be interested to see how that holds out. But generally, well, things at about 300 milliseconds is uh, where the uh, where the game starts to there. fall apart. Anything below that, you could generally build fine, and you, you could feel it, but it's not too bad. It's not going to cause any like game breaking issues. Um, after so this that, be becomes how this goes. problematic. All right, so let us see who is doing what. Okay, so we've got a mine going in, a factory going in, a mine going in. Yeah, generally. Now, this is an interesting map in that every play, every team starts with a couple of uh, miniguns. Now, miniguns, not notoriously powerful. Uh, they're generally sold off just because you need more than one of them to be terribly useful uh but they can you be used early on to do things like punish ex extra greedy builds like a player who builds exposed wind turbines can be punished just by using the single minigun that you start with but it looks like team one and team two are going to sell them off for the extra extra resources and kickstart their builds into going a little bit faster which is a fairly normal response so I've got a question here for both me and Incursus. Mm -hmm. uh, and he, uh, they're asking, uh, Ray Steven here. Uh, well, whoa, thank you bloody for the bits, buddy. <laughs> you, you have the big gate. Oh, thank you very much. Cheers for that. But yes, Ray Steven here asking both me and Incursus, uh, when do we plan to play in a tournament so that we can see you guys uh, playing and when are you planning on doing that? Ah, oh, well. I mean, was there not a time it's two tournaments ago we played? It was a two v two one. We played and we, we lost. <laughs> the first uh, round. I don't remember which tournament it was. Uh, we did one. It wasn't too long ago. I don't. I don't think where Fraz and I did a tournament together. Uh, didn't go very well. But yes, that it, that exists. Uh, we could do another one coming up here. True. True. But I, I think this is another 2v2. We we partake. Indeed, but I think more interestingly, we have players that are going for different strategies than we've seen thus far. So it looks like team one here has a interesting base design. I haven't seen something like this in a while. But we have a player he's going for a very, very fast, very greedy cannon rush. Uh, looks like neither Ooh. player on this team has built any extra economy. So we're going to be looking at low economy, very swift weapon placements, and they're looking to end the game quickly or at least deal sufficient damage to uh, make up for their investment. Whereas team Aussie, two Aussie, here... Aussie, ping, ping, ping. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Team two here is going for a similar kind of strategy, but instead of going for cannons, which are cheaper, they're going for lasers and swarm missiles. The same kind of strategy that we have seen from the previous previous rounds yeah so those guys in chat i understand that there's a larger french audience here and i i like to be very cordial and happy with everyone but let's try to keep the chat in english we have a primarily english stream here and our mods are well all english speakers so let's try to keep everything in english please but don't you know in curses you're meant to learn french <laughs> Ah, that was better ooh. in German. Although I now can only if do only. one to ten in ger German, I can't add. That's about it. Ein, zwei, drei, vier, fünf. I mean, I listen to Ramstein. I don't know if that. I counts. don't know what they're saying. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got some missiles going up on left hand side. Uh, we have the cannon uh, down on left hand side here, and uh, I mean. 
bottom base on the right side is either preparing for it or well just adding extra there so the cannon is not going to be able to one shot that um Indeed. it is at the four minute mark so both all teams know that the cannons and lasers should be coming out very quickly here as you can see evidenced by the uh well the cannon almost completed here for team one uh team two looks like they're delaying what? their weapon emplacements just to make sure they have additional armor which is a decision can work. it can work it can work uh this is going down this decision path means that they are saying that we are going to become a impenetrable well fortification and once we've fully defended oh. ourselves against you then we'll start worrying about it and that's that going to be a little a bit of a problem Yes, because of that cannon specifically. Cannons excel at dealing damage and breaking apart fortifications regardless of how defended they are. Uh, there's a nuke coming. And there's no anti-air. Oh, wait, no, oh, there's, there's one. There's oh. plenty of anti-air here. I missed those two. I keep, my eyes were deceiving me when I was zoomed out there. That I thought they were missiles. No, it would seem that the top player here has gone for the mixed flak and rocket offense, which is... Quite strong. Uh, its weakness is snipers, which Team 2 appears to have fielded. Uh, also, its weakness is shooting itself with an EMP, which the I didn't expect to happen. The laser is now going down, finally. Uh, there with it is. no defense, though. Yeah, that's real risky. Looks like he was oh, just putting it down. And this is something I do a lot. And the reason for it is that in order to be able to put down the ar the wep the uh, armor and defenses first for it, you have to sacrifice a good 30 seconds worth of building time, which is uh, not ideal. But, you know, if you put the laser down first, then it builds, and you'll wait an additional 20 seconds before putting the door on it. And it's oftentimes okay. And in a case like this, probably worth doing, just because so of the requirements. So you're using the swarm missiles to... Oh. Yes, it would appear that Team this. 1, or Team 2 here, has used the swarm missiles to try to bait the flak and then have the, the nuke fly cleanly through the open, uncontested air. Uh, but team team one here has a lot of a lot of anti-air fielded, so it's not quite going to work out that way. What, uh, got a question? What do you think can be better that lasers and missiles into v two? I don't, I don't know. I suppose like I tend to be like one of the people that goes with what I feel like building. Uh, what about you, Incursus? I mean, there's a there's a lot of perfectly perfectly viable options laser and missile or sorry laser and yeah missiles is a, it's a common option it's really powerful uh the counter to it is to shut down the missiles and then use the energy shields to defend it or just shoot back uh, another really good option is just massive cannon spam that will i mean cannons break everything uh, is that a secondary cannon? Ooh, yes. that was a nice laser shot, but now they know that there is a laser in play. Indeed, um, that is a is. second cannon. And he'll he'll eventually oh. field more and more. Ooh. That was a nice hit. Yeah. That's a very nice hit. That just... Yeah, we've got a secondary cannon coming down for the gaming. Uh, the top one has completely blocked off his windmills. I'm not sure if he's going to notice. Team 1 there just completely locked off the windmills. They are getting no energy whatsoever, but adding in... Additional energy shields, that's going to be rough. He's going there to we go. To... Looks like he's fixing it now. Oh, there we go. A team 1 needs to be a little bit more active with our anti-air and start clearing out those machine gunners. What's good with cannons? Uh -oh. More cannons. <laughs> Uh-oh. That's an AP sniper, which immediately invalidates a lot of the defenses on all of Team 1's weapons it's... here. Oh. Oh, wow. Oh. That was a nice shot there by Team 1 taking out the entire oh. line. Critical Wait, shot. Yes. Suddenly, oh. all those super power-hungry lasers no longer have energy. That's going to be a... Uh... That's going to be an issue pretty quickly here. He should have still one more shot in reserve just from all the batteries and storage he has, but it's going to be a little while before he can field that oh. kind of fire rate that he once had. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, 
Oh, and the door snipe reply. That's one less laser out of Team 2. So Team 2's firepower has been significantly dampered by this. I mean, a gunner could take out a cannon. Uh, yeah. Does Team 2 know that they're on fire? While he is on fire, uh, technically that's not part of his base. Oh, right. Okay, I did. So it's not <laughs> going to be that big of a concern. We do have a fire laser from Team 2 down, but whether or not the, their uh, fort hat stays hanging, that's another matter. Yes, and if the answer to the question is what goes well with cannons, the answer is more cannons. The thing about <laughs> cannons is they don't do anything particularly well, they just do everything good enough. So there's, there's no like super combo you get for cannons, they don't combo with anything. They just deal damage. There's no way to stop the damage, there's no way to prevent the damage. You can mitigate mm. some of it. Uh, but you're going to be taking hits. So adding a second cannon just to do that little more damage, just to push them over the edge is what you want. Indeed. Thank you, Nosehead, coming in. There is a, tw a French stream for all of you guys who wants to view the stream in French. Make sure to check out that link and give some support to the streamer there. I believe it uh, is all for one who is doing these. Nose head, give me the link side. too. I'm not on YouTube. I need the link. Get on my get on my stream and give it to people if they're there. I don't know if there's any French people there. They seem to be all in English. Uh still not quite sure who I mean it seems to be a quite a back and forth fight in the moment. Uh yes. Uh, so what has happened here is both both teams have managed to nearly destroy and uh, well, get rid of the offensive potential of the other team. We have one player for each team that has a decent amount of uh, firepower, and uh, the other player's been virtually oh, destroyed. Oh dear. Oh, that was very close. I noticed that Team 1's bottom player has actually placed down another, uh, a 20 mil. Indeed. 20 mm. We'll see if he's going to be able to capitalize on that. So the 20 millimeter, not a game-ending weapon. It's a uh, economy-destroying weapon. And I'm not convinced of the... Considering he already has two other standard cannons, a third one can add the penetrative power that's beyond recoverable. However, it's still another cannon, it's still another weapon, and can deal more damage. And really, that's what he needs. More damage. Oh, it is chopping through quite a bit, and also taking down half. They are dealing a little bit of damage there to the back technology. So, so hitting the technology structure like that, uh, when it's building, doesn't do a whole lot. But the moment that you repair the technology structure, it costs a significant portion of the uh, original value of the technology structure in order for it to be repaired. Meaning that if you're going to be spending 500 metal on repairing your technology structure, you're suddenly not going to have any te uh, any metal to do other things such as repair. Now that's going to be ah, a big okay. problem. That, that may be a problem. And uh, let me just more importantly, uh, Team 2 just took a hit to their core. So just... that means that they have core damage. So when the timer expires in about two and a half minutes, there could be a there could be a match here. You don't know who's going to win. I may have had a small issue because I believe Nosehead popped in to get the link, and because there weren't a mod on my channel, I didn't post the link. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nightbot timing people out. So right now, both teams have experienced core damage. Uh, Ooh, there's two we... minutes left on the clock, though. Yes. <laughs> We don't know which wire. team has taken more damage, but we'll find out in about 120 seconds. Did you do that maps right? Yes. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> I am confident in my math. I'm just very surprised. It's like the Team 1 has had two cannons and has never been able to properly smack down one of the cores. Well... What's happening here is he's not actually firing at the course. He's just firing at the uh, background bracing. So it, neither player has been able to feel damage dealing. Just, well, any any sort of damage, which is what's happened yeah. here. They've had weapons and they're not using them. So they're just they're not, not doing anything here. 
Uh, yeah, we got like his dark cock is uh, mentioned here. I think the biggest problem the teams are having is that they aren't focused firing. Uh, right. Should be focusing on target so that they don't have a chance to build. Because you notice they're, they're like going between them instead of like right, they just hammer one of them. Mm -hmm. But it's not actually having that. We're in the last 60 seconds of this match with no clear winner at the moment. But I'm guessing with the cannons being fired, Team 1 may win this. Unless this nuke gets all the way through. Never mind. Yeah, guys, that is a French stream posted by Airfort Games. If you are French or you want to see the French view, you can click that on and well, have stuff that I won't remember or <laughs> understand. Do you even know any French? Me, no. I keep feeling the guy's trying to like shoot the fire laser with the the missiles, but it's just missing. Yeah, he did manage to get that combo off a couple times, but it's still just swarm missiles, which is a far cry from being able to destroy things like cores or armor. Oh. Oh, we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out. Oh, cannon just coming in last second there. But oh. not enough. Team one wins off of core damage. The time has expired, and team one has the most remaining core HP, meaning team two will be eliminated. I really do love the Vic three music in that. Oh yes. It, it's just so satisfying. Which, of course, guys, you can pick up the Fort soundtrack. B man is the man who does it. Although I don't have his link on me. Do you have the link to the soundtrack? Uh, the soundtrack? Uh, no, I do not have the link to the soundtrack. Da -da -da. There we go, I've got it here. Jeff Van Dyke, there we go, I'm just gonna stand in there. Uh, do you mind me posting it in your chat as well, Incursus? Uh, help yourself, I should allow you to do that. Force soundtrack, if anyone wants it. There we go. There we go. Thank you, friends. You're very welcome. Because I actually do really enjoy it, and uh, Jeff has actually done soundtracks for quite a number of games. I believe he's been... I think he did one of the Assassin's Creed's as well, I think. I think, I think, I think. Let me just check this. Oh, Phil Discography. Yes. Uh, Hand of Fate, actually. A very... another awesome title I could be wrong but yes I will leave that there for you guys so you can check it out if you wish to and we have Shikin, Bowser, Quantum and Water Hazmat let us ready up I'm ready up I'm not there <laughs> yes Jeff Van Dyke is an amazing musician and well he provides the music for Forts we are now into the next match! And on one up. of my favorite maps! Let's do this. Welcome to Balls. Balls, they say. Aha. Alright, so we have a couple of other top ranked players here, both Skidkin and Bowser. Team 1. Again, still not sure which position each player is, but we'll find out sooner or later, I imagine. Once they have selected a weapon, anyways. So when you come to play, because this is one of the first maps I really, really enjoyed. What does your strategy involve when it comes to balls? That's a really weird sentence. Usually depends. <laughs> I, balls has a lot of strategies available to it. It's one of the more versatile maps. It's very strong for missile spam. You can connect to one of these outer islands, which most players would seem to be doing right now, and then use those outer islands as missile platforms, uh, especially the central island. It is one of the, the premium missile silos or missile silo places in across every map, period, even across most modded maps, which is saying something. Additionally, mortars are quite powerful on this map just because of the verticality. You can do things like maneuver the mortars into the lower islands. And they already got to fire Team 1 below. placing down the factory. And also missiles. Not factory. 
Is it, uh, yeah, that's fine. The laser thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the factory tech structure coming out of the bottom p team one player here. Uh, I've got a, we've got Dark Hawk actually mentioned in here. I'd join one of these tournaments, but they'd have to call my fort tip on over. I'm missing something. Tip on over? As in tipping over a fort? He would tip over himself? I'm laughing internally. <laughs> See, Dark Hawk, that was terrible. Even Incursus agrees. Haha. -ha. So, would it appear that Team 1 here is going for the same strategy that we have seen previously uh, with the Swarm Missile and Laser combo? Again, these Swarm Missiles, it's uh, two and a half minutes in and are already ready to fire. And what team are they two, trying to hit with that sniper? Oh, oh they're right. just uh, they're just poking and prodding. A lot of times, snipers are used, well, snipers and machine guns are used to just prod at the enemies and see what's hiding behind the background bracing and such. So it looks like a team two isn't going for the laser missile combo. They're going for an earlier game style rush fueled with rocket launchers, flak and swarm missile launchers. Unfortunately, their earlier game rush is a little bit slower than the, uh, well, the missile rush, missile and laser rush coming out of team one here, as team one is already ready to place down their first laser as well as already have the nuke available. Uh, team 1 has got some missiles on the way, doing some nice light damage to Team 1 there. But, oh, Team 2 already firing some missiles, but really in the wrong place to fire them, because they're all going to go, uh, okay. They've got to be mind. real careful with that design. Typically, you'll want to move the missile launchers into this forward island here, rather than on your starter island, as otherwise, this island gets in the way. Uh, Race Demon asking here, is energy armor only used for lasers? No, you can actually, because it does reflect or holds out a 20 millimeter, doesn't it? So, the commander. no, so the energy shield deflects all small arms and cannons. Now, cannons still deal damage, and oh, small arms as well, still deal damage to the energy shield, but the energy shield will reflect up until its HP is destroyed. So things like 20 millimeters will reflect off of it for a short time. I think it takes two or, th I think it's three shots from a 20 millimeter will destroy the- uh, That is a nuke, oh my- The energy shield. But the first two shots will reflect off the energy shield before the third one finally bashes it down. Where the standard cannon will bash it down after the first hit. So that is uh, going pretty, pretty damn well there for that nuke shot there. And another nuke is about to come out that might, if hits, will end this core. Yeah, that's... That's very much so a destroyed yep. core. No, no, people, calm down. We're only we're watching a force tournament. Let the let all the anger come out in the players, not you guys. Jeez, calm down, guys. <laughs> we're about to have the nukes coming out of Team One, and that should just 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 finish uh, it. Looks like yeah, that Kitkina was the one actually manning these nukes, and uh, ooh, oh. the nuke managing to miss um, his target, but ooh, I don't think it matters. The laser's gonna come into. Make sure that it's all nice, toasty, uh, and gone. There it goes. That Boom. was not the quickest, but eight seconds more than the quickest. So uh, five minutes, pretty much seconds. annihilating them with the nukes there. And that will do. And that. then, yeah, pretty much. Congratulations, pretty much Skidkina and Bowser. Let us see. Let us see. Yes, rip core. RIP core is gone. All right, we're just gonna have a quick look at the bracket again, uh, just to have a quick gander. Who have we got up next? I believe is it Team YouTube versus Genesis. 
I'm guessing that's Felix and... Can't remember now. Uh, am I just playing Forge? Well, we're actually, we're streaming the tournament uh, on today. Me and Curses, you could, well, I believe you either, you've either come from my YouTube or his YouTube. Um, but we were just streaming forts because it's a U the tournament. I can't remember what XIV stands for. Um, XIV is, is 14. No. Oh. oh yeah, because XV would be 50, yeah. So yeah, tournament 14. We're waiting on and, or waiting on the players getting in and I believe everybody's here. Now we just wait on, <laughs> gonna get this next Let's match because I believe this is the second round. Yeah, right, let me check. Is that the last round of... Yes, indeed. We are into the first round two match. So this is Team YouTube versus Team Genesis of the winners of the first two matches. All right, so it looks like um, pretty much Team 1 going almost identical in their times, their technology and minds. Team 2 slightly, well, basically opposites of each other. Team 2 going the same technology as each other, but opposite from Team 1. Could be some interesting designs and technology and pain and suffering coming from this. I'm okay with all these things. How many matches left before the finals? Uh, ooh. We've well, got this a fair is few. just round two, which has got four matches. Then we'll be semi finals, finals, and bronze match. So, another one, two, three, four, five? Did I count that right? We have four in remain. We have four remaining in round two, including this one. Then two semifinals, a final, and a bronze match. That is a total of eight more matches to do, including this one, as this one is only just starting. And it looks like things are going to be kicking off real quick here because we have Team Two selling off their Tier One technology just to get out more later game technologies. That looks like they're going to be going for lasers as well as the missiles. We have another missile laser combo. That's a, a mid-game rush mixed with, well, a mid-game timing mixed with a heavy, well, a heavy weapons rush. And this one's real risky. He's already sold off a lot of his defenses and starting armor and materials, as well as all of his early game technology just to get out this laser that much faster. It's currently two minutes on the clock and the well, the heavy weapons technology is almost completed. We've got Ray Steven asking, what do winners get? Dignity? <laughs> yes. The winners it. get to live. <laughs> <laughs> the winners don't explode in a reactor meltdown. Well, I know this is slightly off topic, but everybody's weird. discovered that my merch link has Frazzy Daddy merch. <laughs> I'm going to go cry now. <laughs> and then Kershaw just goes silent. What I think is funny is that the people on Twitch and YouTube think I'm not reading the chat and they're talking about me as if I'm not reading the chat and it's just waiting, waiting for me to be annoyed enough by it that I start timing people out. Time them all out! What they don't realize is that timing people out is fun. <laughs> you couldn't say that more mischievously if you tried. I, I wouldn't want to say it anything but mischievously. There is no so we, better way to say that. I don't like the look of Team 2's top base. It's very red. Very red. But this is this is a style that I see a lot across the French community. Uh, the very, very dense wood spam. And there's even variations that amount for dense metal spam, which is ridiculously difficult to burn through. Uh, but, as a lot of you guys are aware, it does have the vulnerability to AoE weapons. Things like cannons and nukes do very well versus this kind of, well, defense, this very dense lattice. But things like lasers are virtually worthless against it. Like, a laser will never penetrate that in any reasonable amount of time. So we'll see I mean, if probably take what well, maybe we'll two, if, possibly uh, even three to get through that. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll see so if we they manage to come back from that. 
indeed. The super greedy laser rusher has fielded his laser, which is not a surprise. Uh, T well, both people have actually got uh, lasers going down, which is awesome. It would appear that the player on the top, the team one player, actually has his lasers down faster than the team two player, and has managed to get a little greedier than the team two player as well. He has more economy. Sold uh, off yeah, top more one of his also base. Got, oh, that's so that's gonna be there's gonna be two lasers and the fire laser coming into play. Oh yes, the fire beam plasma beam combo is um, extremely powerful. It's basically the 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 what was the word we're looking for the uh, the ladder stomper. It's just the quickest way of finishing off an opponent in any super amount of time, and it also works decently well versus this dense wood spam. Now, unfortunately, you'll see here that the dense wood spam can sustain that without too much of a difficulty. Uh, the fire beam managing to do more damage than the plasma beam. I really actually wish that when you cross the beams, it actually did, like, more damage. I would love to have that. That would be quite enjoyable. Now, unfortunately, uh, they appeared to have focused on the top player rather than the player that had a bit less defenses. We'll get to see if that comes into play here. One. Oh. Uh -oh. One of the nukes. Oh! <laughs> oh! Wow, what a shot coming in there. One of the nukes has been ignited. Taking out the flak, and that's going to be a little bit of a problem. Ooh, the fire beam wrecking havoc upon this dense wood spam. The dense wood spam doing well versus the plasma, but it's not going to defend you against the fire beam. Uh, I do have someone mentioning here something. Uh, Octave is saying he wants a shirt with Franz in the front and Incursus in the back. I think you mean our logos. I mean, that would be something that me and Incursus would have to speak about. Can't just go using each other's logos. <laughs> I have never done any kind of merchandise. I've never even looked into it. I have a red bubble thing because they, they ship all through the world, so. That is glowing very red. Very red, but it's. Oh! oh. Well, there it goes. There we go. The fire beam, for those guys wondering, uh, doesn't deal a set amount of damage or penetrate oh. a set amount of distance or penetrate through a certain number of bracings. All it does is penetrate a certain distance beyond first contact points. So things like the dense wooden armor do nothing to stop it. All it does is increase repair costs from having to repair more layers of armor. I mean, Team 2's other guy is somewhat like holding on. Barely, but it is actually causing a, a good amount of damage to Team 1 himself. Um, oh, never oh, mind. Oh, that'll do back. it. So, <laughs> the Team 2 player here has gone super risky. He's decided to say, I'm not defending myself at all. Instead, I'm just going to field additional economy, additional weapons, and do as much damage as I can and go out swinging. Which is not a terribly consistent strategy when you're the last player alive. Works well when working with a teammate that can tank for you, uh, not so well when you're the only player remaining. Oh. He really needed to like, sort of land every shot possible there. Yes, for sure. And while a lot of damage has been dealt to Team 1 here, Team 1 is going to be able to recover. They've had a much more consistent economy, and it's going to be difficult for Team 2 to recover from this one. Especially when they only have one fire beam, a lot of energy shields, that's five energy shields, six energy shields, my bad, six energy shields and only three mines. So, um, good, good luck dealing with that. Oh, there That'll it be goes, the end. and it's out of there. GG <laughs> is thrown out. Looks like Team 1 will be the victor. Team YouTube, Phoenix, and Kronk have thrown the lever once more. All right, so the next team we're going to be having up is, let me just do a nice refresh, because I believe, yep, we've got Hambrace versus Battlefield Engineers, which Pyro and Trek Jeff will be coming back in. Welcome back. And the previous match, we did see that Pyro essentially tanked 
a ton of damage. Well, Trek Jeff basically sliced the opponent to bits. Uh, but a little thing from Ray Steven here, saying about, uh, sorry about catching up in chat. I think that in Chris's chat was gotten into his head and that's why he was talking about them. <laughs> no, I just wanted to let them know that they're liable to be banned at any moment, but unlikely. So now, so now I'm interested. Oh, geez. Message deleted, message deleted, message deleted, message deleted. <laughs> you having fun there? Message deleted and it's deleted. Uh, yes. Yes, I am. Jeez. Okay, that looks fun. I see that uh, people are having fun there. I must say, uh, I'm definitely approving of... We're still playing being in both chats. He's awesome. Yes, there's a 30 second delay so that we stop stream sniping. Because people would do that and uh, wouldn't really be fair. Try to just restart and... Sounds good to me. There we go. Right. Everybody's going to ready it. Yeah, no, there is a 30 second delay, T mine. Um, mine's on 30 seconds. And Chris is on 30 seconds, and, well, I hope the, the French one's on 30 seconds. I know I am. Fifth time's a charm. Oh, yeah, because Joe Apocalypse and Romero have came up against Pyro and Checker quite a few times. And I believe they've always lost. Indeed, they have. Alrighty, so let's see. Now, this is going to be a match that I am very much so looking forward to. These are community members that have been around since the beginning and have been, well, very large part of the fan base. And as well as the player base here in Forts. All players that have participated in previous tournaments multiple times and have been fan favorites. And most of them have been tournament champions previously. Let's see, Pyro and Trek Jeff specifically. I believe Joe Apocalypse is still on his permanent second place victory spree. <laughs> that is always a thing. So being this early, them coming together, it's going to be a bit of a interesting one. Indeed. Usually, Joe Apocalypse is the one that ends up being second place in every tournament ever. So, being faced off against this tournament champion team and the favored team is um, going to be an uh, interesting, interesting uh, mix here. Will Joe Apocalypse finally break free from being second place? Or will he end up in, in lower than second place this time around? Missile's already going down for Team 2 on the right-hand side there, right up at the top. Uh, well, if there's no... Oh, well, Team 1 actually is putting down some missiles as well. If there's no sort of, re sort of recourse or counteract to this, it could be pretty painful. Indeed, you guys have seen the, the power of missiles so far. It's been pretty brutal. We have missiles coming out of both teams and lasers laser technology out of both teams as well. Fix this location hotkey. There we go. Pretty much almost going for identical stuff, like vice versa. Like, top bases are both going missiles. Both first bases are both going lasers. <laughs> it's like they're learning from each other. <laughs> well, a lot of these builds are not new. These are all things that we've seen across, the, well, the, the ladder and just the player base for a long time. A lot of these builds are very well practiced, and that's why they're getting out and dealing damage and ending games before the six-minute mark. Even against other experienced teams. So we'll see what ends up going down here, but it looks like everyone knows what they're doing. We already have our sandbag defenses coming out of the players so they can defend their turbines without having to invest into additional energy production. Well, Laser, the missiles, missiles are available for both players, but Team 2 deciding oh. to launch first. Um, see how this goes. That's a nice good hit. Taking out the windmill, causing a good bit of damage there. Uh, that's going to have to be rebuilt and will actually do that was actually not an insignificant hit so that will reduce the da the uh, energy output of the team one laser player lasers are very strong uh, very strongly need that e e energy income so it will be a little bit 
little bit difficult, or at least a little bit more time required to come back from that one. As you guys can see, the sandbag defense is managing to defend the turbines from those rockets, typically something that uh, will shut down most energy productions. Let us see. Ooh. Those sandbags uh, looked, not uh, quite enough to stop all of those rockets from going through, but they, they certainly tried, um, but they were destroyed in the process. Team 2 actually trying to put in uh, an upgrade center to potentially, I'm guessing, upgrade the missiles into nukes. Indeed. Because there doesn't appear... Actually, there, Team 1 doesn't have any anti-air apart from if they plan on sniping them out of the air, which I suppose can be done. Well, thus far, Team 2 hasn't fielded something worth putting anti-air out for. Swarm missiles don't deal... Typically, swarm missiles don't deal enough damage that it's worth getting a lot of anti-air for. Team 1 knows this, and Team 1 can see that the that the nuke isn't ready to fire yet. Oh. I imagine that they're just trying to uh, field their weapons and end the game before Team 2's nuke becomes available, which is a perfectly legitimate strategy and something that is done quite often, especially with uh, Pyro's build here. Pyro, Pyro is, the... is about to, uh, yeah. Indeed. There we go. It's here it goes. such a rush that he oh. should be able to fire this weapon and doesn't end the game with it, but he does do a fair bit of damage. But is it enough to make a comeback, or will they have to start building anti-air? I don't think it's going to be enough, and they're going to have to build anti-air defend against. Oh, nope. They're just sniping. They're just sniping everything. Everybody's snipe. We're going to have a sniping match. That, w that will nope. actually completely obliterate nuke. one of the players. A team uh, T's laser there's... players no longer has any weapons. There's no anti-air. This is going to... Ooh. Yeah. Team 2 is getting suppressed very hard here. They have no more weapons available to them. No lasers. Uh, the nukes are having an issue. Uh, oh, that is sneaky. That is dangerous. <laughs> to say that, the least. Uh, oh, that. Oh. If Joe Apocalypse had attempted to fire those, it would have targeted his teammate. He had to communicate with his teammate and have them manually open the doors. doors. Oh no, he, he definitely did that deliberately, but ooh boy, was that That's anxiety gonna hurt. inducing. Mm. Oh yes. Without enough space Pyro armor, that did on. a pretty hefty amount of damage to his laser there. <laughs> a little I don't bit think of panic Pyro building. could use a laser to get through there. Like, uh, I don't he could fire see straight. Unless... But that's about True. it. Now Pyro is in a yeah. real tough spot here. Notice how they're starting to invest into the anti-air. Oh. Tell your options. Ooh, that was a really good hit by the. They are like sort of like smacking them around a bit, but nobody's done it. Any sort of definite crippling attack. Right? Although Joe uh, Apocalypse is hitting his teammate in the back, apparently. <laughs> eh, it's just a little bit of tickling. Nothing, nothing critically important. You gotta tickle those forts, make them feel good. You know. <laughs> I had to get it in there somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Darkhawk coming in there, though, seeing Pyro li uh, living up to his name. By being on fire. Aha. Yep. <laughs> All right, so... Okay, so we got another nuke coming in. I oh! Oh, if he fires the laser now, he's going to get... There we go! Oh! Boom. Nice! Nice and That hit. is why you cannot let your weapons be destroyed. Just having it all slowed down is enough to, uh, enough to make sure that the enemies are free reign and to blow you away instead. So that's going to be a problem for Joe, Joe Apocalypse because now Team 1 has plenty of anti-air and the only thing Joe Apocalypse has for it is some swar is some missiles. Uh, notice that he's trying to transition into lasers now because he knows this. He knows that he needs something more than just these missiles. And uh, he's going to have to tank up and survive the onslaught from Pyro and well, from Oh, Pyro that's and gonna... Mm. Well, there goes all the anti-air. And there go... Oh, mm. is it gonna snap? Is it gonna go? It's gonna go... Oh, oh the he'll battery. He'll be able to recover from this. Uh, the... No, he caught the battery in time. Uh, he'll survive. 
but he's going to be facing this kind of damage for a long time to come. He still has to, he's still got another, what is it, another 45 seconds away from completing the factory, and then another two minutes away from actually being able to field a plasma beam, assuming he even has the, assuming he even has the uh, metal to place one down, and the space to place one down, which he doesn't, and with this incendiary nuke coming in, that's just going to make his life that much more difficult. Uh, Someone yeah. coming in there, Dark Cloud saying, Team 2 guy, I like it. he's building a wall like he's trying to keep out the White Walkers. <laughs> What's like... he trying to say about Pyro and Check, Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> Pyro's is this walking uh... skeleton king creature? Like, haha, I have a. I'm going to say no more because otherwise it might give spoilers away if people haven't watched it. Well, unfortunately for Joe Apocalypse, uh, looks like second place is not oh. going to be in his future. And he is going to explode Boom. in a rain of glorious nukes and laser fire. That was a very lovely finish by Pyro and Chet Griff there. Finishing off what appears to be, oh, Joe Apocalypse and just lovely going in there with a nice fire. Followed up by the laser beam right through and gone. And that's the kind of play we expect for previous tournament champions. Tournament being Pyro and in. Trek Jeff. Oh, that's so sad. Romero and Joe Apocalypse already booted out of the out of the tournament. I suppose we knew this was coming once we saw them uh, lined up so early in the matchup. I've got uh, the lovely Tudon Ager here saying a lovely thing that we could probably agree with in curses. Says even people that do speak English natively make mistakes. Of course. Yep. Yep. I mean, <laughs> I, for some reason, me and Malahaf have been constantly saying like words, um, like the first start of a word, but you want to say two words, but you end up replacing the the bits at the beginning with the other word, and it's just like, why did it? What? Hmm? <laughs> uh, Alan reboots on Steam. Oh, okay. All right, we got the Galactic Pirate D Turney against oh, Kushmir geez. and Vladimir. This oh, is going to be. This is what we. So, a lot of times I'll be recording videos of forts, and. A lot of the videos, a lot of the recordings, I just won't use because noob stomping is um, not enjoyable for anyone. And I feel like that's what we're about to walk into here. Well, we'll see. So I usually up upload all my videos that I do, even if I lose. Well, I don't mind but losing as long as the match is good. Unless people don't actually pay attention to what I'm doing. Like, not paying attention to the gentleman's agreement gets restarted. Yeah, as long as the match is good, I don't care if I upload it or not. Uh, generally, uh, when there's things like disconnects or people collapse their own base after the 10 minute mark, I generally don't consider it a good, a good uh, match. Now, I'm not expecting that degree of difference here, but we are talking whoa, about oh, whoa, the... Uh, Wait, what happened? What? Uh, looks um, like we had a disconnect. One of the players had uh, a... Uh, game crash. Ray Steven saying, I wish Forts was on mobile so I could play it whenever I wanted. Not sure how that would work for multiplayer though. I mean, you would need to, because obviously 4G and 5G is becoming a thing, but that would eat your data to PCs. I mean, what's your thoughts on it going to mobile? In Cursus. Uh, Fort Scorn to mobile? I mean, I struggle to, uh, I struggle to recommend any strategy RTS game for mobile. However, Forts is one of those that it's not really trying to be an RTS. As much as I like to play it like an RTS, and we're here playing it like an RTS, most players don't. They prefer to simply, uh, play it like a physics-based uh, we restarting okay. again. Right, so it looks like he's having some crashing issues. Uh, 
This is the second time, which means we're unlikely to be restarting again. The next time he crashes, he's going to have to live with it. It'll be a 1v2, which is really unfortunate. Yeah, no Wi-Fi, Ashoka, but I'm talking about if you're out and about. Can't really play it. So, that's the thing. See, I was understanding what you were saying about, like, playing as a strategy game, well, like, RTS. Like, it is strategy, it's just not, like, the RTS of building armies and bases and stuff. I mean, it, it is. is. It's still an RTS, and a lot of players will figure that out pretty quickly when they start being exploded by people who, who now actually know how to play the strategy game part of it. But most people, and... This is, I think, just because it's a very casual game. It's very enjoyable. The explosions are very enjoyable. Uh, and it's, uh, the sound effects and everything are just building. perfect for them. Oh, no, it's excellent. <laughs> and not going to lie, I get a little carried away sometimes building massive uh, sculptures and structures and bridges to and fro. But it has very much the same kind of appeal as... Uh, what was that game? That uh, bridge-building game? I can't uh, remember the name of it. Polybridge? Polybridge. It has the same kind of enjoyable aspect as games like polybridge which are built just to watch things collapse horribly <laughs> or try to build super engineering designs and uh the player base that enjoys that kind of thing doesn't seem doesn't uh, very often delve into the strategy aspect of the game and so it's not so popular for the strategy aspect of the game because these strategy players are in the uh at least the population for it is not quite so large. So if we're gonna say, play it on mobile, sure, why not? I can take Fort's mobile and build giant bridges and watch explosions and enjoy the sound and all the other aspects of the game, but I wouldn't expect to stay any form of competitive in terms of the strategy aspect of it. See, um, like I, with you saying about the sort of building aspect of it, I will actually name drop Bloody has built a forest hammer before. Right. And it was glorious. He even put like shields around it so it gave the bit of electricity. And it was pretty much it was identical to the Forge Hammer, and that was actually really cool. But it's interesting to see the people's design of what they come out with. Particularly when it comes to pro level or it comes to people just genuinely just doing stuff that's the you know, instead of just a box. Uh you've got people come out with all sorts of shapes of things, you know, angling stuff to make sure it doesn't, you know reflect a certain way or you have people just making crazy things like me you know a little bit like picasso <laughs> exactly and i think that kind of thing would be excellent for a mobile game but you know of course this is all hypothetical i don't i don't i'm fairly certain forge is not planned to come out to mobile at all uh nah. you'd have to speak to the devs but i'm like 99 percent certain that's not on the plans uh got a question for you and curses uh ray stevens asking did incursus come from Age of Empires 2, because he seems to love his RTS concept, the Forge. Uh, and Curses did not come from Age of Empires 2. Uh, however, I do love my RTSs, including Age of Empires 2. Uh, Age of Empires 3 is not on my love list, uh, but 2 is pretty good. Me, it was uh, like Warzone 2100, uh, Homeworld, Command and Conquer. We're up playing them pretty much. But what we will do is we're going to get back to this because we've got swarms on all sides. Oh yes, we have lots of swarm missiles coming out, whereas Team 1 has gone for that swarm laser combo. Team 2 is ah. just going full nuclear. We have s missiles coming out of every orifice here. So got... will you uh, zoom in a little? I tend to try and keep it out a bit so we can see what's going on because I don't want to jump it around too much. But if there's something you guys want me to see or whatever, I try and zoom in if there's something particular going on over here or over here. But I'm liking Team 2's top base. That is some... Very dense wood. That's nothing's going to be getting through that anytime soon. Yes, and as I was saying before, this is something very common within the French community, and this is a, de a defense specifically designed to deal with lasers, lasers and other penetrative weapons, and it absolutely s just shuts it down entirely. We'll see if the, if the nukes can be fielded to bring that across, because we already have some pretty heavy explosions coming out here. Oh, yeah. 
Looks that? like Team yep. One's bottom bases defenses have been entirely breached. It is now just standing on stilts that are being repaired as they held, hold up the base. <laughs> I feel uh, like, team, like Team One is just going to get hammered. Oh, yeah. The Team One. Oh, uh -oh. oh, we have that, a self nuke. Now, fortunately, one of the nukes did make it across, but uh oh, it looks like we had a, some friendly fire going on here, which is going to cause a little bit of a problem. Now, this is one thing that they have to look out for. With this much wood spam, it's expensive to repair all that. You can see here that the repairs are being actively slowed by not having enough resources, but I think with the overdrive commander coming in, that should give them enough resources to repair all that before the next wave comes in. I'm kind of curious because obviously, well, they know that. Oh, here we go again. Let's see, because he could nuke his own core if that doesn't go right. Oh, yes. oh and nukes start getting, you know, traded blow for blow here. When was the last Forge update? They actually updated pretty often, like with little tweaks and everything. The big major update was uh, tons of guns. Oh yeah, so a team, for those wondering, it's team two that is the uh, the top tier, toppest of the top ranked players here in Forts, whereas team one are the regular community members. Uh, the regular community members actually They're managing to hold their own, and I'm impressed. Color me impressed. Is these players here from the French community, team two, are the toppest of the tier, and they've made a name for themselves both within the French discord as well as the ranked ladder here in the competitive forts oh this is gonna hurt yeah oh, this, this is, is gonna going be a to... rough one. Oh, oh, oh the nuke passes there, actually it actually went right through if if that first nuke had landed this would have been over fortunately he manages to survive and it's, it's okay uh, I've got uh, Shuka just quickly asking, um, what about me and you doing a 4v4 but on a 1v1 map? That sounds like an actual nightmare. And that uh, is a drunk yeah. nuke. Very that drunk is a nuke. Oh, Jesus. Dodging everything and missing. Uh, oh. Uh oh. Um, Another drunk nuke uh, coming in. Where is it going to go? Oh. Nowhere. Okay. Also missing. Things are okay. Where did Fraz is coming from? Do you mean where my name came from? It's actually my nickname. <laughs> because, uh, funny. Believe it or not, my name's Fraser. It was Fraz and Taz and became Fraz. There we go. Looks like Team 1 has managed to field a heavy weapon. And this is, this is the swing in... This is oh. the swing they've been looking for. Now, unfortunately for Team 1, Team 2 specializes in that super dense wooden armor, which makes lasers uh, not a very hard. strong option. Yes, and because but... Team 1 has been entirely unable to field anti-air, Team 2 is confident in that they can field double nukes, and it's just going to do that much more damage. Oh, oh, oh. that for Oh, it's just holding on by no more... <laughs> and the laser oh, is on fact, fire. I know Chris is his name. Yes. It's actually quite easy. It's in curses. Uh huh. Oh, there goes the port Boom. down! One nuke to rule them all. And Team oh, 1 has lost a player. Drunk nukes are like the best. I believe there's a drunk nuke mod actually on the workshop. And anybody who doesn't have forks, there is a huge workshop of stuff on the Steam workshop. Oh yeah, so no, Steam Workshop like is rats. absolutely filled with Forts mods. Like, I can't cover them all. It's uh, kind of ridiculous. But, you I know, know I tried to cover them, okay. and then they're like, oh, some people are like, oh, I've got this mod and that mod, and it's just like... <laughs> <laughs> there are more mods than so... days in the year, and it's quite a lot of fun. But it means you're never without choice. It's something, the Forts community is just booming with the creativity. You just find so many different things whether it's weapons maps creative fort designs and nukes are just missing everywhere oh jeez just seeing the bolts flying all over the place 
This poor base is being absolutely obliterated, and he hasn't even been able to fire his own missiles in such a long time. He's just barely managing to stay on top of repairs, and not even that. Remember, this player only has a three mine economy, so he's not able to keep up with a lot of repairs and rebuilding as you would be able to for an otherwise. Oh, oh my wow. god! Four ow, nukes. Ow. Holy and just like that, the entire front part of the base is obliterated, and he's going to finish him up with minigunners. He's going to finish him up with minigunners. You terrible, terrible human beings, you. There goes oh, all wow. the wood, and a sniper shot or two with a couple machine gunners, yeah. and it's gone. Oh. That was, Jeez. I'm, you know, give it to Team One, though. They held Dude, in for a players. long time. Two of the top players in the the world of force, and they managed honestly, to bring it down to nine well. minutes and eighteen that seconds. That's four. So much damage! So much damage! They did press. They did well. Better luck next time. Uh, they, they can take that, you know, pat in the back with that. That was extremely impressive. Absolutely. Well, you know, want drunk? Do want drunk lasers and drunk snipers? I don't know if you can do that. I don't. I don't know what that would actually mean. No one could see a drunk laser as if it did the wibble wobble. <laughs> I just rewatching this quadruple nuclear strike. Wow. That just yeah, that, that it just the entire eats base the just. Because I know with like mods, you see some people that's like the, the, there is some very overpowered weapons that vaporize force. Uh, but to see just you know the vanilla type weapons just do that, it's just really nice to see it really is now that's a lot of damage why always balls that is well hello there jack how you doing buddy uh skit gonna why are you like this shout out to the fans from the deg chat why are you like this dun, dun, dun. you know what you're doing you know what you're doing in chat all right, we are What's kicking up one I'm more I'm actually interested in what he's here. done now. Just inciting do do? people to get timed out is what he's doing. <laughs> oh, well. He's having fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is not the Fraz face cam. That is not my face. I do not have a goatee. <laughs> Seeing you in a goatee would be strange. Well, you see, I did face cam and last week and you came in and it was like me and then you saw my face when we jumped off the really high bit in apex and <laughs> i wanted to throw up i like your solution to heights in video games it's just like <gasps> crunch up my face and just look away and hope for the best not paying attention to my surroundings or anything just right so we have very top four it's not doing too much. I'm I'm hoping they're just saving, but they not really do much. Really? Oh, oh. oh there we go. Oh, okay. uh, that's that very much so just broadcasting their plans. We have Team 2's top fort uh, very blatantly going for the armory and the, well, the munitions plant technology. That's going to unlock cannons for Team 2's top player. However, he's done so by building it on top of his base, exposed like a flag. So Team 1 will definitely know of, <laughs> of that. It's like, over here, guys, over here, shoot me first. I'm going to have cannons. That's <laughs> basically what that's saying, man. And Team Two here's bottom base is going for an aggressive slash map control style play. It's going to include, it usually includes flak and rockets. Starting off with those EMP rockets. Looks like the flak are already down and looking to be suppressing the enemies pretty quickly here. So it looks like Team One going for that. In this case, not going for swarm laser. Instead, both going laser, but it looks like the top player has taken the central island for the uh, swarm missile transition once things start kicking off. You're on balls. I've uh, got Pyro popping into fire. my chat. He's seeing he's disappointed in us. Savoring food. Oh dear. That the Fraz curses did not make an entrance as participants in the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> We've already said we'll do this next time if there's a 2v2. 
Well, so far, so good. It appears that Team 1 has been very active with their sniper, managing to clear out all the uh, early game aggressive options from Team 2, which will put them pretty far in the lead in terms of actually getting things done. They'll be able to put down their lasers without being suppressed by one of the players, and it'll be effectively a 2v1 in about 90 seconds, once these lasers come online. Yeah, there's a fire laser, and no laser in the top one, though. No. Not oh. just yet, but he is building oh. locations to, for them. So we'll see how that goes down. I mean, the top base does have a cannon. Uh, nearly about halfway, which is pretty great. Um, the second fort on the right-hand side. The bottom one has got a lot of fort, to be fair. He certainly has quite an impressive superstructure. However, it's not filled with things that are actually going to assist the team. And Team 1 knows this. Team uh, already do you see how slow those things. windmills are going? Yes. Uh, he's managed to, uh, during oh. his construction, to destroy their efficiency he's he's fixing them up real quick and they're coming back online now oh my apologies guys i forgot to press f8 there you go that's it up so yes we've got team two being the gaming and little wild against shakin and bowser shakin being a very active in force and both and in curses and my discords and pretty awesome player to be fair and a very awesome individual oh well that was a really awkward place to fire that <laughs> Rip, bouncing off of the single energy shield present on Team 2. Fortunately, not uh, dealing any damage in reply. We do have the laser beam three quarters of the way done for Team 1. Uh, team 2's cannon, is, oh, about to be ready and used. Yep. Uh, once that door finishes, they will be firing that. And, oh, a little bit of fire coming in from the top base here wonder what's about to happen. Let's see. Oh, not doing as much. Getting rid of the doors, but not doing as much as I hoped it was going to do. But now they know where the cannon is, and if that oh. goes... Oh, but the flag oh. coming in through the the hole that the cannon opened up, and that's going to that's gonna get rid of one of the lasers, and that's going to make things a little bit more difficult for Team 1 here. Ray Stevenson, you know what I'd love to watch? In Curses versus Fraz, but Fraz starts with a slightly better base. Well, to be honest, there is a fish versing video we done that counts people keep saying Fraz versus and curses like we already have <laughs> La -da -da. a little bit of burning there oh Ooh, that second Ooh. cannon shot missing they that, need to make oh. every single one of these cannon shots count team two is already noticeably far behind Team 1 is just scaling up freely, and Team 2 is trying yeah, that's to do what they can do. Yeah, a lot of fire do. lasers that are just going to give them a constant stream of fire that they won't be able to do anything for. Um, t the bottom base doesn't seem to be doing anything. He's not built any advanced structures. He's not. He's just got some flak and a rocket not really doing much in the way of anything else, whereas his top friend is getting slammed quite a bit. So I'm not entirely sure how... I feel like this bottom base has got a lot of fort, but not much in it. Yeah, I'm not sure what the plan here is for this bottom base. I'm sure they have some plan, I just don't see what it is. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Is, ta is Team 1, one, one. going to lose his cannon? Going to lose his cannon technology? It's extremely weak right now. And he does not have the economy to repair it, so if it gets shot again, oh, and there it goes. That means Team 2 can no longer build heavy weapons of any kind. They are locked to the first tier of technology, which means they're not going to be able to field anything that can actually end the game for at least another three minutes. And Team 1 doesn't even have the economy to do that if they wanted to, which is going to be problematic for them. They really need to just focus, uh, because each just picking on another four is just they're not going to have the, the sheer firepower that they need to crack through. Whereas well, the, we're getting 
the second base here is just firing EMPs. But then again, if you fired the EMP while well, the door was open for the laser, and then the cannon came through, I'd probably be the end of that fort. Uh, I mean, it would. It well, could it... probably snap off with the laser like reacting and cutting in that little area. Maybe. But well, the laser explosion doesn't cause that much AOE damage. It wouldn't cause the uh, structural. It wouldn't cause the nearby structure to break. But it would shut down the uh, any any reasonable amount of damage output from that particular base. Oh. Beer. Is the thread going to snap? It looks like it might. Oh, just barely keeping it intact. So what's oh. happening here is Team 1 isn't fielding a lethal amount of damage. We yeah, have, they're more like tickling them right now. Yes, they, they've gone for the, the mass fire beam style, which is good for disabling the opponents, but not so good at actually destroying them. You can do things like tear asunder all of the innards of this base and get rid of all of the flak and EMP that were once there, but you can't break through things like these energy shields and actually destroy the core. Same thing up top. Notice it's missing all of its technology, all of its innards and infrastructure, but uh, it's still alive, and that's what fire beams are designed to do. Which is, you know, it serves their place, but they need to start transitioning into different weapons. Which I don't think they're going to be doing for another couple minutes. Yeah, I just feel like the, the bottom one on Team 2 is just really just not doing anything with technology. Hasn't Done it, apart from the te piece of technology they have down, they've not done anything else with it. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, I'm sure they have a plan. I haven't seen what the plan is, but they're trying. They're trying real hard. Oh, that might be about to go, but... I mean, they've got five windmills, four um, well, there's mines the here, but they're not... Uh-oh. The MPs will be a cause for causing that core to go. Again, they still need to hit it with something stronger than that fire beam in order to make the damage actually count. They do have a laser in there that they're just not using. Indeed, I suspect they don't have the energy production for it. Uh, they only have four turbines. So we'll see if they oh. ever get to use it. There goes the MP. Shuts down the shields. Can he get that through might be the it. Oh, that might it. do it. Oh, Ooh. not quite enough. He needs just a little still go, bit though. more. Yep. Oh, oh, he didn't, he didn't put it out. All right, hey, well, Kizza. he just burns down. GG. Well, that is that, and now we have one remaining on team two. Now this is team one, and we've got two on team, and they're just going to continue to repeatedly smack around their prey. And, and this it will be a matter of time. Yeah, this oh. time the combined firepower should be enough to start really burning things uh, down. Unless you set yourself on fire. Uh, Almost. So did that close. laser just... That laser took that out, didn't it? <laughs> yes, it did. Absolutely. There goes EMP, which... Oh. Anybody gonna fire? Anybody gonna fire? Laser spam. There it's is a, a laser spam. that's ready to fire, but... He keeps setting his own base on fire. Oh! Well, there that goes. <laughs> bottom base might be able to sort of snipe the core, maybe, from the bottom? Like. A quick the... tip for those on YouTube if you hold uh, Alt while reading the chat, then it will pause the chat's auto scroll. That way it uh, won't won't keep going on. Really, really good for reading those juicy messages. Or clicking on it. So you're getting, you're getting juicy messages now? And there we go! There it goes! Team 1 winning the final battle there. Team 1 with the a victory. And in come the lovely... La -da 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 -da. Very That'll nicely do done by the team. There we go. Well, hello, Casper. Welcome back. Indeed, I have switched to full-time YouTube and just do programming on the side now for fun as a hobby rather than an actual profession. 
which is yeah, actually only. really quite enjoyable. If only. <laughs> if only, if only. Yes. So it looks like we've got Pyro coming back in. So it'll be Pyro and Trick Jeff against Croc. Is it Cronkinator? And Felix. His name is Pull the Lever. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to. Emperor's New Groove is going to be in my head for like the next three days now. Don't make me watch Emperor's New Groove. <sighs> All right, good luck, have fun, and let us begin. Time's up. The next Let's round. do this. We have Kronkinator and Felix versus Pyro and Shrek Jeff. This is going to be another very enjoyable match. These are all players that have been around for a long, long time. Previous so tournament get... competitors and always put up a good show for us. So we get team one. Yeah, let's get Kronkinator and Felix on this side. And team two being Trek Jeff and Pyro on this side. Indeed. And Trek Jeff and Pyro basically going for very similar technology and sort of resources. Left side here, stripping away pretty much most of the four on the left side up the top. Uh, but both going for slightly different technologies. So we'll soon see how that pans out for each of the teams. As you guys have noticed, the. Uh reoccurring theme is that a lot of these players will sacrifice much of their base and initial starting defenses and other inherent resources just to get out technologies that much quicker and it the goal is that it uh pays off just by having weapons out faster and they can punish the enemies for it it's a very interesting bit of fort design up there it top right it's a bit of a, a, a hole i guess uh so this is a strategy that is done most of the time when people are going for swarm missiles it allows them to place the swarm missile in the rear first rather than in the well adjacent to the mine position and the reason to do this is that by placing the rearmost swarm missile first you can upgrade it while the second one is building that way you can build both the swarm missile and the nuke at the same time as opposed to having to build a, a swarm missile first noted <laughs> i did not know that one that was a new one to me but i always find like these tournaments there's always something brand new that comes out it's like oh well this time i haven't seen anything new or novel it's just a lot of the uh, similar strategies of all the strongest builds just bashing against each other. And so far, the ones with the most success rates seem to be a, a mix of laser and swarm missile. But we also haven't seen anyone go come out with one of the stronger defensive strategies. Uh, missing some of the, we're missing a lot of the, uh, some of the older competitors that's go for the very defensive styles there's a number of competitors and i could throw some names out there but a lot of them prefer if i don't do that so in, to respect them i'm not going to go name dropping but there are a number of competitors that like to go for very defensive styles and these defensive styles are very strong versus builds like the laser swarm missile here because the swarm missiles require the base be vulnerable to the swarm missiles in order to be effective and with only one of the players going for lasers, it's fairly simple to defend against the laser, assuming that you're not being hit by the swarm missiles. So if you were so to we go have for something lasers. like defensive play, then the swarm missiles are ineffective and thereby also the lasers. So we've got lasers going in for like on both front fours with the with Pyro's team being slightly ahead in time by maybe five seconds? Maybe? Oh, it's really hard to tell. It's really hard to tell. I would say, yeah, five, five seconds max, if that, but um, we've got, oh, uh, team t team one's also top four, I get, uh, also having a laser go in that's halfway done, which is uh, same time as front four and team two. This is going to be very Although here comes, oh, no, yes, no, maybe. Is he firing him? Not firing him? 
You I don't appear to have any. He was any... just hot keying all of his things, and I believe waiting for a more opportune moment. So right now, they all teams know that. Well, Team Two knows that Team One has a fairly significant amount of anti-air available to them in the form of both flak and multiple machine gunners. Uh, so Team Two is going to be waiting for a good time. They want to make sure that they're all fully defended, so they can take hits that way. Once they start opening fire, they don't get retaliated upon and immediately thrown. Everything uh, is on fire. Thrown on the back foot. Lever, yeah, just because, um, like, the snipers, they, they could uh, at least take out two of those gunners, I think. The third one might be a bit too far down. I definitely think they could do that if they wish to. But Pyro's team, I'm guessing it might be Pyro that's on the bottom floor, has just finished up the laser beam. And, oh, well, here we go. There we go. Gonna get a few, and... So what's going to happen here is this is going to fire. Oh, and then, oh. the then the door is going to open, and in comes the laser, right through the oh, open door. Oh, 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 oh. This is How is your, that? Uh, this is your laser missile combo, and why you need to have a defensive play to deal with this. Otherwise, you're going to have a real bad time. That managed to hold. Yeah, I was surprised that didn't just end him right there. That combo was designed was to end him. very it. lucky with him. that. Now, I this is going to be a problem. Yep. Oh. There's the retaliation, and that might just do it. Well, that was Pyro, who is now gone from it, and we have we now have Trek Jeff all on his lonesome tonesome. Indeed, Trek who Jeff. Who has to face off very against Very good this. under pressure, but we'll see if he can do it. Remember the fire beam plasma combo, uh, currently fielded by well Team One here is the strongest plasma, uh, strongest laser based combo that we cu have currently seen in this meta and as you can tell even with all those defenses planned to deal with it oh. uh, it wasn't quite enough oh oh <laughs> the incendiary <laughs> nuke oh. oh the laser and everything wow. everything incendiary igniting the same nuke that ended him that is a combo he was not expecting to hit the, just the nuke managing to get all the way across, suddenly the sniper taking out all of the anti-air off of Team 1. Team 1 is in a really bad spot here, with only one laser to their name, that's not going to be enough to deal and with no the Team 2 player. Oh, uh oh. And the nuke manages to make it across. Oh, that's core out. damage. Team 1 player is trying to come back from this, he's building a swarm missile to try to deal with anything that can take out the laser, but it's going to be a really tough call to make it back from here. Now did we mention that this was going to be a good match, because this is going to be, this is one of the best matches I've seen so far. Oh this one got exciting real quick, and we can see here Team 1 trying to use that spaced armor just to try oh. to mitigate some of the nuclear damage, and using the laser to, well, be the anti-missile system and try to get rid of those nukes and at this point it is worth it because team one it, the, that single laser is not going to be enough to penetrate team two's defenses here and he knows this so rather than trying to penetrate the defenses he's using his weapons defensively to get rid of all of those nukes and the missiles just to make sure that he can live through this and look at that he's oh, oh, oh I, I think it, oh, oh he waited to fire the nuke uh, and he's got no anti-air. The nuke is coming in. Oh! Oh, oh that's, a, that's a big hit. That not only did a lot of damage to both, uh, well, his energy and his laser, but that got rid of some energy production and damaged the laser. So that's going to require repairs, which is not a cheap... Well, Team 2 doesn't have build. any anti-air, actually, so that's just going to go straight through. He doesn't have Although any anti-air. Although here comes another salvo. Yes, but he also it does, isn't being hit by a lot of... Well, a lot of missiles. The swarm oh. missiles don't deal much damage. Oh! Oh! Oh, that was a little bit of trickery there. That was a bit that was a bit messy. So what happened there is Team One used his laser again to shoot down the nuke. But in this time around, it hit a energy shield and reflected back into his own base. Well, destroying what little anti-air he had left. So the next nuke, unless he starts repairing the base, which he's having a hard time doing right now, is going to get through clean and unscathed. I mean, it's, it's quite coming down to the wire, this one. Very much so. Uh, oh, the sniper going again for Trek Jeff on the right side. And I believe, is it Felix we got on the left? Yes, yeah, Felix we got. Oh! Uh -oh. 
Hello, Pop oh, Star. That was Thank rough. You. That was almost lethal damage. That reflection going almost straight back into his own laser. If that had taken out his laser, that would have been game over for sure. Remember that this core has been heavily damaged by the splashdown from the nuke. So if that laser oh, goes and comes. detonates, he's not coming back from this. Is it gonna go? Is it gonna go? Oh, he doesn't ha I don't think he has it. Oh! Very, very close. So, so very, very close. The nuke loads quicker than the laser, doesn't it? Uh, yes, yes it does. And here Wait, comes Casper another, he's trying banned, to... But why though? <laughs> what? Guys, oh. why are you so banned Casper? What happened? What did he do? I love how just the one swarm missile got through, it just tickled the floor. It's like, can Casper, guys. I'm sorry, we're still playing. Why did Casper get booted? I'm not sure. Why you do this? Looks like a mildly oh. inappropriate joke. It's fine, I'll unban him. Alright, so, um. It's kind of like almost like they're doing the same thing back and forth, like. Uh, he's taking out the nuke with the laser, he's then firing more nukes, the laser takes it out, the nuke fires again. I mean, I do see that he's trying to focus on some more of the sort of windmills to take away his power to be able to power the laser. But it's, it literally is a back and forth thing that nobody's really quite got that nudge through now. It just seems a bit of a stalemate. Yeah, that seems to be what's going on here, but uh, Team 1 oh. is still on the back foot just because of the amount of damage. So in the 4 minute time frame, they are going to be uh, not on top, shall we say. Hopefully that they'll be... Uh, maybe we'll be, they'll be able to change that, but it looks like they haven't been able to do anything of the sorts. And with Team 2, they did manage to get down a new technology, the factory. And it looks like they'll be starting to build a laser pretty soon here. Oh. We should end things. Oh, ho, ho, ho. And there goes a one of the windmills as well. Nuke hitting, causing a good bit of damage there. I'm wondering if Felix done that deliberately, though. He's done it to save the... Oh... Yeah, I think he's tried to try and, you know, spruce up a little bit, try and go more of the offensive than the defensive to try and take down the fort. Because I suppose it's more of the same that they're, you know, and we've got Trek Jeff again aiming for the bottom of the fort. And is it going to... Oh, so very close. Trek Jeff just trying to... Oh. Sniper for sniper. Uh, I think I think he's managed to stay on stay on top of it. I mean, with a ah. with a couple with a couple uh, a couple snipers. Even if one snipey goes down, he'll have a second one. Ah, uh, Trek Jeff has now upgraded to two nukes. So oh, yeah. this this will definitely end it, or at least uh, oh. be the change he needs. With double nuke coming out and no anti air to speak of. Remember. With two nukes, is much, much easier to bring down than a nuke and a swarm missile. But double nukes, also a lot more damage output possible. So, so long as Team 1 is unable to field a any kind of anti-air or any kind of anti-projectile, then it'll, uh, it'll be worth to bring those double nukes. And that seems oh. to be the case. Oh, oh, oh but, one oh, laser not doing <gasps> it. Oh! <laughs> Door did not close. Did not Quick close enough. in time. Nuke goes straight oh, through, and that wow. is the end of Team One. Just seeing that just come straight across. Man didn't take out one of them, not the other one. Lovingly. Double nuke for the win. Team Two with a victory. We have Trek, Jeff, and Pyro moving on. Kronk has thrown the lever for and the last time. There we go. Very, very nice. GG. So that was, uh, that was, I feel like that was one of the best matches this tournament. Absolutely. That was very awesome. Very, oh, very good.
So it looks like Team YouTube. Well, actually, I was wrong. Kronkinator may have thrown the wrong lever, but this time he's landed himself into the bronze match. So the uh, we have one more match here between, well, some of these toppest of tier Forts players. All of them, I think all of them top 10. Now, Vladimir will be the only player not in single digit ranks that is competing in this particular match. And the loser of this will be facing off against Kronk once more in the bronze match. Dun, dun, dun. Whatever shall happen, who knows? But he's gonna. I was about to say everybody's kung fu fighting. That's what someone should do a kung fu mod for. for... <laughs> I don't even want to. I mean, know I know you've got the entail. ninjas, but. Like kung fu, I don't know, fling black belts at each other or something. Maybe a hand fist going through the air, like, ha I'm gonna hush up now. <laughs> Ta-da! Alrighty. So now we are off to the second semi-final match. It is Skidkina and Bowser versus Vladimir and Kochemar, which I believe... He is the number one, isn't he? Yes, he is the number one player in the Forts ranked ladder. And I believe his name is French for Nightmare? Uh, Chad oh, would have lovely. to correct me if I'm wrong on that one. Wait a minute, let's have a wee look here. So is it... Koshmir. Koshmir. Oh, I will not yes. be able to pronounce that. Yeah, it is. Nightmare. It means nightmare. It's oh, French guys. Wow. We have some meme tactics coming what? out. We aren't even in the bronze match yet. Welcome um, to... Well, for its memes, we have Team 2's player, topmost player, is moving the core all the way to the back. And that is going to be an interesting decision. Typically, that this is considered a meme strategy and not a legitimate strategy, just because of the amount of delay it enforces upon your base. By disconnecting your base, you are guaranteeing that you lose a large amount of economy. All the construction time from your, well, all the construction time from your, uh, anything you have con under construction, as well as mining income and everything, and permanently sets you back, well, in timings, usually to a degree that cannot be recovered. But the benefits in doing this makes it... The benefits are quite large if you can pull this off without being completely eradicated. That was because you suddenly so have a very large amount of area to make entirely defensive. That was. Oof. Oh, is that gonna snap? It's gonna snap. No, yeah, he's but he's gonna, gonna, gonna let it go. It yeah, that's that. That can't maintain. Um, but that was a dangerous move. But also, it, it's worked. It has worked, and it looks like he's going to be able to maintain it. So, we have... Okay, now he's got to be able to come back from this. Notice how he's just building his energy oh. production, whereas the other players are, well, just about to field weapons that can break through. They already have their swarm missiles down and about to start launching, and things are going to get a lot more rough for our core swinging player before he, uh, before things get better for him. Uh, well, missiles are coming in from the right side already, doing quite a bit of damage. Uh, windmill going down, wow. and mini gun going down. Yeah, those swarm missiles getting a, getting a pretty critical hit. Destroy the mini gun. Both windmills now. And both windmills. All right, well, that will relieve a lot of the pressure off of our core swinging player. And it looks like the, the aggressor is going to be taking the brunt of the retaliatory force. Yep, that's going to hurt. Ooh. I do love when you see some crazy things in the tournament, so like, you know, the swinging of the core there, that's just, you don't see that sort of thing usually, and then pe for people to do that, it's like, what? Although it's I noticed certainly Kushmir's a very ping. strange choice. Going up to about 600 there. 900? Is he okay? Uh, I'm not seeing those ping times. At least I didn't see it's... anything hit to, uh, hit above, above, uh, 150. Lucky for you. <laughs> yeah, we get Koshmir hitting about 600 up here and then dropping back down to about 70. It's a bit of a weird fluctuation. Well, hopefully it fixes itself out because we have some more, well, just suppression coming out here. It looks like Team 2 just gonna be content to take things slow. And this is 
generally not the path you want to take against a player who's swung their core. See, like, uh, part of me almost feels like, you you know, the classic saying is like, slow and steady wins the race. Mm -hmm. That might be the case for Team 2 here, because they've already got, they've got the laser going in up the top there, uh, swung the core back, you know, got ample defense there to take quite a few hits. Team 1 not really having much in a way of answers to it. Like, they've got the, the ability to potentially build lasers on the bottom four at about another no, now. Uh, top one, though, really is just sending more swarms. Then again, Team 2 don't have any anti-air. You know, Team 2 doesn't idle. have much to show yet, but with the kind of build they're going for, with the, the core swinging and the missiles, they will be able to field more as time goes on. Team 2 has not yet reached their full potential, and it's going to be a little while before they do. But when they do, it will be noticeably stronger re reply than anything that Team 1 has fielded thus far. Uh, team, team 2, Goshmir just uh, casually shooting his teammate. It's windmill, you know, just to like, hey, how are you? Uh, Dude, how are you, Sky Storms? And I believe the Glorious and Curses is doing good as well. As always, I'm actually ridiculously hungry right now as I sit here eyeing my foot long sandwich filled with meat that I wish to swallow. Let's, uh, uh you see, this is, this is one of the benefits of having swung the core. That splash damage would normally have hit his core and done a pretty hefty amount of damage. And instead, splashed on nothing but wooden bracing. Uh, well, we're about to see a laser come into action, I believe, which could I mean, there is a shield on the top base. Oh, yes, um, but so if... going to be able to cut it off. Team 2, I imagine he's going to target instead, well, one of two places, either the economy of Team 1, or just oh. go straight for the kill. Looks like he's oh. going straight for the kill, oh. which is... Uh-oh, oh, oh, dear. Oh. <laughs> oh, that was a rough hit. The unexpected uh, reflection of the laser has uh, not only ign it ignited the nukes and not only caused massive amounts of damage to well, himself, but also destroyed one of his lasers, which is gonna be a bit of a problem. Oh! Oh! There we go. A nuke oh, that was a beautiful up, up. nuke. Oh, see if that laser hadn't stopped. Those ba those two nukes swung up. On the left hand side there, they actually swung straight up, and because the laser obviously was still firing, it took them out. But if they that would have been his economy gone. Although he doesn't seem to be repairing it. It's kind of left it hanging. Which seems a little bit dangerous to me. He's likely having economy issues. Remember that team one- uh oh. Well, uh, that was yep. some anti-synergy there, igniting the enemy nuke as it was coming in. Remember that Team 1 has not gone for a very economic heavy option, he only has three mines. You can see how slowly each of these wooden bracings are repairing. He does not have sufficient economy to keep up with all the repairs. Uh, uh oh. Uh -oh. And the Ooh. anti- if both teams with multiple occurrences of the anti-synergy, again! Igniting the opponent's nuke and again causing the nukes to deal much, much more damage. And it's, it's, this time it actually took out every weapon available to Team 2 here, at least all the lasers, so that's gonna be rough. This is, this match has still got some more time in it, both players just slog it away. Both players ending up just tanking up and not actually finishing the match. Here comes another new. Ooh. Nukes are pretty much pretty much done. Uh, we got some flames, some fireballs, and everything going in there. Uh, da -da -da. It seems that things are starting to calm down a bit. I think the players are deciding to say, "Hey, this is not working. We need to change tactics." Team 1's player is starting to build out his base more and work on his economy. Team 2 is also working on his economy a bit more, and things are starting to settle down for a longer match. I mean, they're still sending shots across, they're still doing what they can, but they're not expecting these current shots to actually oh. end the game. Although that That's hit that. did a lot of damage. Not only splashing on the core, which will be important in about 6 minutes, assuming this game manages to go all the way through the time, 
but it did also destroy the turbines, which will have to be replaced before things can proceed. Here comes another nuke! Oh, and... Oh, dear. Oh, is it gonna oh. rip? It's gonna rip! Oh, it's just holding on just a no more. There is a laser in there that he's trying to keep a hold of. Uh, he may have swung one. his base, but he didn't fix his foundation. So things are still looking real rough for him. All right, so these four missiles have been ignited, which means they will expire. Not that they had an opportunity to. All right, this one is gonna be uh, gonna be a problem. Yeah, <laughs> I'm surprised this guy, this team one player, has managed to hang on to that uh, that wind turbine position for so long. There is a lot of gunners suddenly going in from Team 2 just to try and alleviate the and pressure, they, I believe. And they need it. They have seen that he's upgraded, Skikina has upgraded both of his swarm missiles into nukes, meaning that it's much, much easier to shut those down. And there's oh. one. Just shut down just like that. Oh, drunk nuke. Still continues straight in. Drunk nuke, the thing that you can never tell where it's going to go. Got a bit of blue uh, in here, actually. Blue metal band in here on Team 2 for Vladimir. Just, they're just, each team is just constantly firing repeatedly each other, just trying to do any sort of damage. We're already down to almost four, four minutes and 15 seconds. And we've got Vladimir's laser taking a little bit of a shot from the sniper. Oh, and there it goes. He didn't oh. manage to get a door on it, and it was exposed. And so it was sniped down to oblivion. Yeah, but all the teams here have... It's just devolved into a slugging match. Neither team has managed to put together a set of weapons that can actually destroy the enemies here. They've both decided to say, we, we've we given up on trying to destroy the enemies so much as just slowly whittle them down. But there's only about three and a half minutes remaining in the match and that's not going to be enough to whittle, the, whittle them down without getting some kind of critical hit with these with these uh, nukes. Oop. Yeah, look, a team, team one's player here is filled with flak and fire beams. These weapons are meant for suppression and, well, purging of opponents' hidden if he built like one laser right now, it, like particularly in the second base, could be extremely effective in helping you know curve it down a little bit. Oh, absolutely. That's the blue metal means it's been stretched. Like red usually means there's too much pressure on it, whereas blue usually means stretched. Is that correct? Correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, that is correct. A strut such as this one here that is blue means it is stressed by being stretched. So blue is just as bad as uh oh. Oh no. Double incendiaries and suddenly that base is missing. Well, once oh, there was painful. How did that laser survive? Just barely hanging on there. What do I rate this game as, Skystorm? I rate it the, the highest possible because, to be honest, I've probably put more hours into this game than anything else apart from Homeworld. <laughs> uh, you should get it. Do we have any spare keys left? Warning. I don't think we do. Nuclear launch I do detected. not believe so. Yes, guys, make sure to check out Fraz's perspective. You can uh, thank you, hey. We're Still Playing, for posting his link there. Make sure to check him out. And uh, um, I will more incendiary nukes. More incendiary Hello, nukes. Hello, they actually managed really to touch the core. Watching your videos. And Just if you want to pass by the lovely Incursus' view, Catch if you want both of them in the background or something. Hello, Incursus. Hello, Franz. I really enjoy watching. So I'm saying hi. Hello, Spotty Tiana. I just put that up there, so forgive me if I saw it too long ago. How long does it take to get into a match? Uh, I mean, instantly, what? really? Someone's asking how long does it take to get into a forge match? You make uh, a lobby or join a yeah. lobby and you go. I think Nose will be interested in trying to figure out what happened to this particular brace and why he's on fire. Uh -oh. Because Forge likes to give you oh dear. The double nuke oh. coming in. Well, I will say this. If um if he didn't swing this base, this core, this base would certainly not be here right now. That is for sure. And yes, Popstar, the, the devs are watching. Ooh, 
<laughs> it's 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 like this is what I am. This core I imagine would it has that feel that I imagine you'd be like walking outside in the snow with no shoes on. Like everything is about to go very wrong for your feet. Oh, oh, this core oh! He got the snipe on the nuke at the last on the drunk nuke. Oh, that what is going beautiful. on? There's 45 seconds left. What's gonna happen? Oh my god. Ah, uh, jeez. All right, so there I is. About half a minute left. That means when the timer has expired, the team with the most core health remaining will win. In the case that both teams have exactly the same core health remaining, which I doubt in this case considering all cores have been damaged, then the team with um, the most general damage will win. That is, most bracing destroyed, most weapons destroyed, and such. Honestly, I have no idea which team is winning here. I... Part of me thinks team... Uh, two might win for the fact that the core is at the back. Remember that core not has been, been it has been damaged. Is it it um, has been damaged. Oh, we're about to find out. And, and the answer is team, team one, one wins with eighty six percent core Ooh. health remaining. G -G. So much back and forth. We just want to have a quick little look at the way that swing that core took that away a little bit. You speed this up a little bit. You can see. Did some trickery back there, connected some lovely things, took it away, and whoop, swing back, it went. It was, oh, it was, that was an, certainly a very uh, unorthodox match. And it came right down to the last second before when it was decided. But we are going, is it the bronze match or is it the final we go into We first? are moving into the bronze match next. And for those guys who are wondering, that is going to be the losers of this match versus the losers of the previous match. Now, the bronze match has, in previous tournaments, it's become a tradition at this point. The bronze match has always been a very memeful match. This is the match where we <laughs> typically see things like tier threes and moving of cores and such. So I, I'm curious to see what kind of shenanigans these guys have planned, or if they're just going to go for very trying. It shall be quite fun. It's like, who will walk away with the honor and dignity of taking third place, it would be, wouldn't it? Taking third place, indeed. Uh, Skystorm's <coughs> asking us, who do we think is going to win? Hmm. Not actually sure, because basically Kashmir, uh, or Kash, Kashmir? I don't know, he posted how to say it, now I can't remember, uh, is number one and has been knocked out. I genuinely thought that was probably going to be that way, but I believe Pyro and Trek Jeff are still in it, and being that they've won before and they're extremely strong competitors, possibly them. What do you think, Curses? I think it's entirely possible. Honestly, I can't tier all feet. the remaining players are Thank very you, strong Storms. I would not be surprised if any of the teams won at this point. Yeah, there's some super strong teams in the tournament, and they, they just get stronger and stronger. As always. As to be expected. So we have here uh, everybody kind of going for basically the same technology apart from left side top. Going for slightly different... Oh, wait a minute. Are we, is he about to do it again? He is about to do it again. And Looks like we have but, another course wing coming out of Team Team's And topics. away it goes. And oh, oh, you didn't connect it this time. Get Swing it. the core. Oh, there, there we go. All nice and connected up. <laughs> oh, that is brilliant. Koshmar rhymes with Scar. Koshmar. So Scar, Koshmar. Okay, that's how you say it. Apparently in curses. Koshmar. I will take your word for it. Now, unfortunately, this map is not one that supports tier three weapons, uh, but yeah. we do have core swinging, so that counts. I mean, don't know what else we can't have. Hmm, I mean, we do have some laser technology going down on both side, bottom forts and top left. Uh, top right going cannons, so... Cannons an excellent choice on this map. And provide Team 2 for a little bit of different uh, strategy that they can have access to. Uh, team 1, bottom base putting down all mines, so we're not going to be seeing any missiles out of that team. 
or, or on the bottom four anyway. Top one does have another place for either missiles or mines, depending how they wish to play it. But considering they went very heavily invested in laser technology, I very much doubt it. So, in curses, who do you think is going to take this bronze match for Sports Tournament 14? Oh, I have no idea. This is going to be an interesting match, to say the least. Now, I kind of actually expect this one to go the full 15 minutes, which would be which would be neat. That is some very, very uh, tight wooden structuring on bottom base on Team 2. Indeed. Usually, uh, they start it by connecting to the ground and cross brace in their bottom. Um, I don't know if he'd forgotten to do it this time, because this is a very heavy... Heavy style. Oh, yeah. there he goes. He, I think he just did the I order think slightly, slightly backward. I I make this mistake almost every time. Uh, but the wood bracing here is very heavy, so he you need to connect it to the bottom first. That way you don't overstress your your base. But this will make his base very sturdy, very rigid, and able to take a lot of hits, just the way he likes it. Something else gets said about that, but I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> You know, there is a lot of things that can be said about a lot of different things. <laughs> I'll leave it up for chat to work that one out. I don't think they need the help. But what's interesting to me is that the base here for the team one has gone very, very risky. It's exposed, it's out there, and it's fast. We're, let's say, almost at the four minute mark, and these lasers are almost completed already, but. It has come at the cost of every imaginable defense available. See, Team 1's top one. Oh, yes, selling it. I was kind of wondering with the fact that he had that, and that'd be a straight laser right through. Oh, absolutely. Uh, he's managed to seal that up. Um, we're at the approaching the 10 and a half minute mark left, and Team 2's fort on the right hand side. That is. You're not going to be getting through that anytime quickly. Uh, Certainly not getting a laser through that anytime soon. And you've got two cannons going in the building there on top right. And left on the bottom there also got a very strong front as well. And a laser about to be ready, but if they're going to be shooting at the, fr the, for at the front, it's not going to be doing much. Could take out the, you know, maybe trim a little bit off the top. That's about it. Then again, if it Actually, if he hits that right and took down that top, both oh, the laser no. and the fire beam That's going to be really bad for top player right here. Oh. He's defended against one oh. laser, but not two. And just um, like that, they're gone. Um. And there it goes. Oh, yep. Yep, and Let's that is the bottom bit. Jesus. This kicked off real quick. Uh, well... That, that, that kind of went. Well, Both it, it, cannons, <laughs> core, gone. Just just like that. Poof. Well, the, uh, that's why the fire beam laser is such so strong. Uh, for it, it cost him almost all of his defense, but, you know, he did manage to, uh, to pull it off. <laughs> I don't like windmills, therefore you can't have it. <laughs> I don't know if can he get uh, that one. Uh, the top base would have to redesign a little bit, but the angle should exist. Oh, it looks like he's redesigning redesign. right now. Yeah, but he should be able to get that shot. Now, can bottom base clutch it here? Uh, he did lose almost everything, including his weapons, and uh, he his still economy. has tech. He still has his technology. So Which he's none going of them have shields apart. Need. He's going to need it. Yeah, he's building oh. tier one. I think he knows what he uh, what he needs to do here. Oh, yeah, and all that thick wooden bracing is getting getting burned by the fire beam. Yes, so that it, literally it, just... It just doesn't do much. It just barely, barely They're probably possibly going to need to like, change up because lasers are not going to get through that anytime soon. Oh, so. yeah, no, absolutely. And they know this, and they're working towards swarm missiles already. As well as rockets and EMPs, like they're not, they they know what they're doing here. They just have, to hammer it for a bit. Yeah, we're probably gonna hear some rather loud screams soon as the top bases' minds blow up. 
Uh, they won't detonate. The uh, wood will expire long ah, before okay. the uh, long before the mines do. See if he manages first. to bring this back. He's just that's going to be impressive. I would be very impressive, and I think yeah, he's going. I know what he's going for. You guys will see it in a moment. Looks like he's bringing out oh. those missiles. Oh, those missiles could take down. Uh, oh no, he's put up a little bit of wood to hopefully stave off at hitting the shield. And it did. That's gonna gonna. When he gonna replies yep. the laser, or when he hits the laser, will he? Looks like he's not even bothering to do the laser. He saw that the that the energy shields didn't get hit, so he's sitting on that laser, but he's not firing it up. Yeah, oh. he's trying to snip off the top. They know what they're going for here. Tips. Down. What? Oh, God. Okay, here come the gonna... rockets. This is going to be rough. So all that dense wood now has to be repaired. And that's going to be problematic. Oh. That is a little bit of fire there. It's quite a... Oh, and boy. Here comes another volley. And out goes that almost of all of the machine guns. There. Indeed. Uh, I mean... Mm, yeah, you can't, the doors are closed up there, so you can't really do it unless you did an AP sniper and, and put a wall on it. But that wood's going to get chipped away. It has been quite vastly chipped away, actually, in fact. It has been, but he still has a fair ways to go before disconnecting the base. With no anti-air remaining, these rockets are going to just start firing again. And... Oh, shield has deactivated in the top there. There goes a nuke. Oh, and that's going to land. Oh dear. Look at that's all of that fortune. repair. That's going to cost a little bit of a dime. Uh, he's still on fire at the top. And with the fire, this is going one way very, very quickly. Oh, well, someone ran out of energy. You need to pay your energy bill. Well, they have the He's time. managed to brought this... He's actually got the front up there again. Some sacrificial armor. Yes. I'm uh, actually he's, surprised he's still he's not alive. Dead. He is hanging in there. I'm full, full life. Oof. Sniper going Look very sneakily up there. Uh, these rockets may hit it. Up. Oh. He doesn't even get the chance to get the sniper, although that look. Uh oh, oh. That's a lot uh, of red down starting here. Starting to collapse. He had his forward stable, uh, his forward his... foundations removed, and the nuke landing in the best possible spot, the furthest away from the core, and his core is just slowly getting burned down. They're trying to use that laser to snipe out the rest of his foundations. Oh. There it is. More rockets to be coming in. Oh, Missiles going out. It's only a matter of time, unless. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, this I would new be potentially a weird. Yeah. Yep. Right on top. And of the there door. we go. Team two. Boom! With out of there. Team two has been removed. And that is a bronze match, and we are heading into the finals. There's the finals a best of three or so, a best of one. The finals are a best of three, if I recall correctly. Let's see. Yes, it is a best of three. It will be the Battlefield Engineers versus, I believe Here it was... Here comes a nuke. Okay. Yes. And there goes the base. Alrighty, so yes guys, we're going to be heading into the finals of the Forts 14 tournament, or 2v2 TDM. You don't know what TDM is? You're a gamer. But if you're wondering, it's Team Deathmatch. <laughs> this is not a co-op competition. So yes, we're going to have the lovely Battlefield Engineers against Bowkin. Which is Shikin and Bowser against Pyro and Trek Jeff. 
And it's the best of three. Indeed. So Ooh, yeah. all the matches thus far have been, thus far have been a single elimination. Meaning that once your team loses, you are out of the competition, and that's it. This, however, will be a best of three. So it looks like we've got a bit of rivalry going on before it's even started. Oh, absolutely. Remember, all of these players are very high ranked. We have uh, three out of the four players here are in the single digits. So they, they know each other, they played each other a lot, and they know everything that's going on down here. And it is a best of three. Best of three. <laughs> of seven. <laughs> Please, no. No, not like this. <laughs> Settle this Minecraft PvP. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, looks like we are ready to go here. We're just oh, waiting we're on all for one. Round one of the final is here. Time's up. Ah, up yes, and down. Yes. Nope. Okay, so what have we got here? What have we got? Team two or team one basically going same, you know, mine down, same tech down. Team 2 essentially doing the same thing on both sides. Guys, I want to see your best wood spam. What about <laughs> the best metal spam? Hmm? So that is something I've seen 42 scientists do a fair bit, uh, the metal spam tactic. And it's disgustingly strong versus things like lasers. Like lasers will never ever get through metal spam. Uh, but anything AoE just takes metal spam behind the shed and removes it from existence so probably won't <laughs> see that around here that's a rather gruesome way of doing it i mean it's it's yeah it's a gruesome way of dealing with metal spam that's for sure so what do we expect do we think we are going to be seeing any trickery or think it's going to be full force you know strain of missiles batter each other uh i well it looks like we have the tried and true tactics coming out of bo both both oh we have a little bit of trickery coming out of team one here Cannon. but the tried and true tactic coming out of team two looks like skate cannon and bows are going for the laser swarm missile if it's not wrong i mean if it's not broken don't fix it uh team one going for cannon laser meaning team one will be the defenders here for a short time before retaliating with much much higher firepower yeah because we've got pyro and trick jeff on team one and chicken and bowser on team two indeed <sighs> surprise didn't see the bottom board swinging back <laughs> <laughs> it's like, is on fire. out of the way as fun as it is to so see the far. course swinging it's uh, not been a successful tactic thus far. Not that we particularly take examples from the um, the third place, the bronze matches. We we know that all the players were not going for the uh, the full tryhard mode there. So we get top base going upgrade. So it's gotten rid of the technology for the missiles because I suppose you're not if your missiles are taken out, you're likely your four is dead. Right. <laughs> that or Lots someone's used a tier there. three and almost missed your base. Um, Looks like Team Two is opening up with their first one volley way of them. missiles. Oh, and is there any? There is no anti air, so this will hit. What was this? That one random swarm missile getting out in the lead. Uh, most of that actually missing though. Up. But, uh, well, they got rid of all the windmills, so all the, the wind power is now gone on bottom base on Team 1. Yes, Team indeed. 1, though, has a cannon coming up. Those swarm missiles were specifically targeted at the bottom of the base because that is where the, sw the energy production is known to be, as in Team 2 knew the energy production was there and specifically targeted that location for it, just to try to slow down, because he knows that those swarm missiles aren't going to be doing much damage in the way of well, destroying the base or anything else, so you might as well target what you can get. In this case, what he can get is the energy production, which will slow down the Team 1 player significantly, especially considering that he's going for lasers, which are energy-heavy weapons. 
Yeah, two fire beams are going down. Uh, pretty much almost identical timings. I'm wondering if that's Pyro's one. <laughs> nope, that is not Pyro. Let's check Jeff because Pyro is the top one with the cannon. In fact, I haven't seen him use cannons in. Uh. <laughs> in a long when was the last time? time. That's a good question, but in typical Pyro fashion, he has sold off all unnecessary parts of all unnecessary technologies just to get his cannon out faster. It's a four and a half minute mark, and he's about to open fire. And if he does it right, could cause a significant amount of damage to his opponents in the first round of the final. Indeed. So, so the first heavy weapon shot. is about to be fired. We'll see what it what it amounts to. Ooh. Well, those fire beams. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh-oh. The fire beam laser combo hitting directly into the Team 1 bottommost player and about to be followed up by... Oh, is that... he? Did he get the nukes? He got the nukes yep. and there is no anti-air in sight. This is going to be That's devastating. Gonna... Oh. Did he get the wood in time? He did, but now suddenly oh, the lasers are back online. Rip? He's... Uh, <laughs> he's trying. His base is crumbling. He's trying to save it. Oh, oh, the no, laser! No, no. that will be the end of well, Team Pyro is in this himself. First Just cleaning player. over Eve. And instantly, Pyro takes over the remnants of his teammates' smoldering oh, base. Oh, oh, oh. Nuke almost making it through. He's Pyro is. He's done once yet, though. Uh, he did. Uh, it didn't really? hit anything terribly exciting, but he has used it. Uh, it oh. landed yeah, yeah, yeah. straight into the wooden armor, which is not going to deal the damage he needs. Now, Pyro did claim the remnants of his base. He's going to try to clutch this. Uh, we'll see if he can he can come back. It's going to be a really tough battle from here on out. He does not have the assistance of his teammate. It is one versus two at this point, and he's facing off against double nuke and fire beam plasma laser now the combinations thing that, that have been have, devastating though, is see the top base on team one yeah it is very fragile it is absolutely very fragile it does not have a lot of defenses is vulnerable to plasma beam fire laser which is getting hit by it right now is vulnerable to nukes his anti-air is constantly being suppressed no 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 that's no, no. spiral is gone so team two taking the very first round and of course, sending in a nuke just to rub salt in the wound. And that'll be the end of round one. Looks like Pyro had a desync right at the end. Didn't like him losing, potentially. This is fine. Things and are down coming back together. It We're all right. Goes. All right, so we'll be on to round two. Now, if Pyro and Trek Jeff can actually win this one, it will go into best of three. If they don't, then we'll have our new winners. That was very How well played like out of team two. Very nicely done. But seeing that, that like, insane, like, uh, how quick some of the players are too like bring their fort back online sort of thing like the way trick jeff would build really really quickly managing to hold out of course then another laser came in but i mean can't do much against that but he managed to you know keep it there which is impressive ah good old abyss abyss this is one we only saw once thus far on this tournament it's, uh, different, to say the least. Not one that we see often among the regular force matches, just because players don't know how to handle it. It's such yeah, a the strange core placement. Is very at the front. Like, your your core is extremely vulnerable in this one. Being, being so close to there. You can add a little bit, but if you add too much, you're going to rip your fort off. Indeed. It's, uh... It's certainly an interesting one, and there's not a whole lot of shenanigans you can do in this map in terms of cheeses and such. But there is one location, and this became very relevant in the previous match on this map, where you can build a swarm missile right under here. Right here. There's only one place on this side, and the same place mirrored on the other. Right down here. 
Everyone here does know about this position and is incredibly powerful, so we'll see if anyone gets to using it. It looks like Team 1 does not intend to use it as they've already built an armory and not gone for the workshop technology. Typically, this map is dominated by rockets, which is not Interesting as to see the bottom four only just now placing down technology. Indeed, it would appear he has gone for the much heavier economic route. He has five mines, turbine, before putting down that technology. Whereas the other side is going, well, more aggressive, which you'd expect from uh, players around here. And Pyro and Pyro and Trek Jeff are going to have to well, win this one, essentially. Or they will lose. I almost feel like he's tickling the fort right now. Just like, hmm, gonna give it a little twitch. <laughs> so who do you think is gonna win? It's obviously with the team two taking the first round. Who do you think is gonna win this? I'm not sure. Team one knows that they have to pull something out of their uh, playbook here in order to come back from this because they're gonna be down one, and if they lose this match, then they are out zero two. So they definitely want to come back here and it looks like they're looking to get aggressive we have trek jeff have sitting on the sniper team two's top base oh yes this is that's going to be painful. personally my strategy that i prefer to go for and we'll see if they manage to come back from this because trek jeff does know how to deal with this but he does not expect it coming right now it's not planned for it and he's only going to have a limited amount of time to deal with it now what i do like to see, and this is different from what I do, is that Team 2 has gone for the much more economic route. While they've built mortars here and will be fielding them very strongly, uh, they nope. haven't, well, pin pigeonholed themselves into this technology. They're going to be moving up, they have the economy to do so, and they fully intend on transitioning out of it sooner than, well, probably sooner than later. Though they are doing a, a sort of a, a decent a bit of damage to Team 1 to kind of make them have to obviously counteract this. Indeed. But notice how he hasn't built... Well, there's the upgrade center. But notice how he didn't build an upgrade center before? Yeah. That means that he's not intending to end this with the mortars very quickly. Uh, Shuka asking Krasen person, person what if Forge was 3D? Do you, I take it you mean if it was just like a 3D game, not like VR, but 3D? Well, I don't know. Like, it could probably be like Worms 3D, I guess. I imagine very think? similar to Worms. Yeah. Which is okay. I, I noticed when Forge released, Worms got a Forge mode. Well, that I didn't notice. Yeah, they have a Forge mode. <laughs> Alright, well... Team 2 has gone for the early game suppression, and they're going to be finding out about Team 1's plans very quickly here, because Team 1, going for more mid and late game options, despite not I'm having nearly curious. the economic power of Team 2 here. How is this going to work? Like, do you, like, oh, well, we're about to find out, but there's just, oh, well, a good chunk of that is actually getting in. Which is surprising considering just how much anti-air Team 2 has available. Now, Team 1 did see that anti-air. They know exactly what's about to be happening here. And they know they're going to be oh. completely shut down unless they manage to do something about it. And things are only going to get worse for Team 1 before they get better. And it, it, yeah. oh. Going to need to have some sort of sniper to start picking this off in some form. So, interesting development. And I, this is why... This makes a lot of sense. Team 1 is actually the Firebird Commander. That means with their active ability, which they had active a moment ago, uh, all of these bullets, both the incendiaries and the machine gunners, will become incendiary and ignite the opponent's forts. It would appear that Team 2 is going for a tactic that Team 1 was not prepared to deal with, and that tactic is just massive amounts of incendiary firepower. Will it work out, is the question. Is Team 2 starting to be able to field their weapons? They still don't have the map control necessary to do the damage needed to actually end the game, but they are starting to reply. Uh, that's an interesting place for a swarm. <laughs> uh, yep. 
Is that going to actually get it out? Uh, yes. Oh, the top, top, team one top base is getting hammered. Oh yeah. They activated the commander ability, so all of those machine gunners are igniting everything on the base. Which means that there's going to be a lot of fire and a lot of repair costs. Not a lot of damage. Yeah, Nathan, I'm kind of thinking the, the same thing. Team one is on a little bit of the back footing here, but... Absolutely. I mean, they might be able to come back, hopefully. Maybe. Oh yeah, so the Otherwise, damage output of Team 2... Team 2 doesn't have that killing potential. They don't have those weapons designed to actually end the game. They have weapons designed to suppress the opponent. This is going to be a very slow crawl. This is the early game aggression. Keep the opponent down as we tech up and slowly transition into a harder and harder hitting weapons. You notice the swarm missiles coming out. They've, they're upgrading their minds now. This this early game aggression was not designed to end, it was designed to suppress as they transition into later and more harder hitting things. You can see the, the mortars have finally been upgraded, and it's only going to get oh, more and more pressure. Oh god. That is a couple of really strong missile hits there. Indeed, and again, very surprising those shots managed to make it considering the sheer amount of, uh, well, flak available to Team 2 here. But now the commander ability uh, is active, and suddenly Team 1 is exceptionally flaming right now. Ouch! That looked Out come more really mortars. painful. There it is. Everything is on fire once more. And just like Everything that, is on fire. Team 1 still suppressed, and Team 2 still free to expand as they see fit. And that's the plan here. But they're still upgrading more. They're upgrading more mines for Team Two. Oh. Mm. So long oh, as right. those so flak that's... exists, Team One just won't be able to field those rockets successfully. Yeah, so one is like, cause um, I think he's been trying to somewhat snipe them off, but has not really gotten the chance to properly do it. Uh, because if he can get rid of them, that would cause him to have well a substantial up tick uh, uh. snipers do keep getting popped themselves and team one Certainly. not really do be able to do anything like you mentioned that's you know they're completely suppressed at the moment they're kind of hanging on but team two is just constantly the, the eco in team two is insane oh yes and this this game is only going to continue trending one way team two has the advantage they've prevented team one from expanding they prevented team one from getting out their weapons and team two is just doubling down on their lead they're saying if you want to play you want to play they're saying that team one is playing on the defensive trying to get out those super heavy weapons trying to get out those one shot alpha strikes in these rockets team two is saying nah you guys could have all that. We're going to sit here. We're going to eco up as hard as we can, defend as hard as we can, and just suppress you. And suddenly oh, now there's oh. a nuke flying across the field, and Team 1 is woefully unprepared for it. And it's oh. going to be very difficult for them to prepare for it for so long as they do not have map control. There's just so, so very much just fire everywhere. Oh my lord. Oh, a little bit of a uh, well, one missile getting through there, but I feel like the forts are just hanging on here in Team One. And they're trying, but Team One still has a few seconds before they can start firing back, and it's not looking like it's getting any better for them. Uh, yeah, they do have a laser going down, which could, if done right, bring them back. Whether or not the oh, he's got no one kick. shot to do this. Oh, and oh, it's not enough. Team through. two still had plenty of armor in front of their core, and now they know the fire beam plasma laser combo is there. So it's they're not going to let that happen. They're going to double down that armor, and there's not going to be any more opportunities for that shot to get all the way through. I mean, I do think see if the the fire beam or laser hit the mortars, that could be quite devastating. It would be somewhat devastating, oh, but keep that in mind, laser, is it gonna go? the mortars are not the primary weapon here. They're a tool of suppression. If the mortars go, it's not going to stop the Team 2 from actually continuing to do their damage. So much fire! Oh god. Oh, I mean the fire beam is getting through a little bit to the core. 
Oh, that's still a trying lot to of metal there. The plasma beam that little can't bit. quite make it through. And here comes another here comes nuke. nuke from the bottom. Oh, getting a little oh. bit of hit there. Oh, uh, what? But, um. Oh, drunk nuke <laughs> dodges all the shots and then wow. dodges the base. That was a lucky, lucky shot there. Get another one coming in from the top. Some mortars to drain the gunners out. Oh. Oh, that is... Oh, dear. And that's it. Um, The nukes makes it through. Not enough gunners, and that's going to be the end of Team 1's first player. And now suddenly all the firepower that was scattered across both players in Team 1 is going to be all focused down to the remaining last player. And that's going to be a real rough time. And now everything is... is on fire. The commander ability is coming in. Oh, dear. All these bullets will suddenly yes. start igniting the base. Here comes a nuke. Ooh. Incendiary Ooh. nukes without having to use a fire beam on them. Oh, whoa. It's rough. Oh, bit of a desync. Uh, well. Ooh. Okay. It appears that there is a, a desync. And that'll throw us out. Now, this will be, I believe, up to the referee. As I looks like the, the the host is still alive. It was just a connection issue. Yeah, I, I can't. I'm unable to rejoin. So this will be up to the referee. As I've been the, able to join. Uh, desync occurred right as the game was about to end. Uh, so we're now we're back. We're we're back in the game, but looks I'm wondering. Like everyone's made it back in. Oh. Nope, for two scientists is now gets connected. I, I'm not, is Shrek Jeff even? Yes, I'm Shrek Jeff is currently has currently reclaimed his base, and after a brief, brief moments, things are stable, and the situation. Oh, nope. nope, that's the end of that situation. I was about to say the situation hasn't changed, and he's just going to end it, and I think despite the desync that the. Uh, I think the referee is going to call it for Team 2 here. Yes, indeed he has. And that is going to be the end of the finals. And we have our tournament champions. That is Skikin and, and Bowser Shikin taking Bowser. first place. And that is G another tournament G at an end. G Let's see if we can... Are they on Discord? See if we can pull them in. It looks like they're uh, not in their own. I know they have... Be for not being Firebird. Uh, yes, indeed, they did win with Firebird. That is you team two. You never see Firebird usually. Now it's an interesting commander. It's a commander that's quite strong, and you guys can see why with the amount of suppression they had there. But it is a commander that's not very generic. So that is a very strong combo there. Uh, let's see. Skit Bowser. Uh, do you have VC? We can pull you in for a quick chat. Yes, I know Shikin does. He's joined me actually in some stuff. Indeed, I've seen him around. Uh, let's let's drop down to the Forts Discord. Yes, let's. Uh, and Forts Discord. Which one do we want to go into? I'll just drop into. Uh, There we go. I followed. Followed. Hi there. Hello, Hello there. there. Hi. Welcome. Very, well played. A very, very, very good games. I love that. And that's what we're here yeah. to see. I actually loved that Firebird play. That was awesome. I haven't seen a good Firebird uh, play yeah. in a long while. We thought we would go for, for a riskier play because we were one game ahead. Well, and it paid certainly off. paid off. They did not expect that at all. And they were trying to do that comeback with the uh, laser and the heavy weapons plays. But you guys had such a defensive suppression on them. It was awesome. Uh, by the way, this chat is uh, limited to four people, I think. Well, uh, we, can, we, can move, we can move people. Oh, okay, okay. Yes. Uh, where is Bowser are... is in team, yeah. Yep. And there he is. Well Welcome played. to the party, Bowser. Hello. Um, well, the problem, the problem was that there were too many people in the, the channel and I couldn't join. 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. On purpose, so not on everyone can join. <laughs> That's I why I move. It's just the way I we like it. Everyone. In curse, yeah, like me. you're in curse Swiss. I, yeah, uh, that's, that's, because, that's because of that roll. <laughs> <laughs> it's rigged. Rigged. Something about uh, cheese. This was a really great tournament. Oh, yes. Yes. This, yeah. this great plays, and this is this is what I love seeing about forts. Watching you guys do this kind of play, it makes me so very happy on the inside. So what, what would you guys think about doing another and the like this coming up soon? Come on, how on the outside too? <laughs> really, I didn't expect that a firebird play. Really clever from you. <laughs> I didn't expect it either. I I didn't even notice you guys are firebird until suddenly. Like, why is everything on fire? That's not the way it's supposed to work. <laughs> yeah. You never see was... firebird uh, usually for because, but then that was just that was nuts. So much yeah. fire everywhere. Yeah, we we figured out it it would be a good choice on, on Abyss to, to have Firebird. Yeah. yeah, that was my Empire's mistake was that we didn't really plan this tournament at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we just yeah we just uh, went with it. Played it by ear, and I haven't played Abyss probably like properly for a year probably. So uh, yeah, yeah, we had a, a bit times. of preparation. So we, we had some tactics on, on Abyss, uh, discussed uh, just one hour before the tournament. Yeah, you <laughs> noticed we, like the first train, like the first match we did on Abyss as well, we almost lost. So, oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and this one we also lost. So. All right, guys, well, it has been a good one, but I'm going to have to say goodbye to all you guys. I look forward to seeing you all in the next tournament. I'm sure the Forts devs will be more yeah. than happy to be pulling up another one soon here. Yeah. Yes. Well, they already asked me to host the next. <laughs> well, there we go. So do it. Do you it heard now. it here first, guys. We have another but, tournament planned hey, coming up soon. I, I need some. I, I need you guys uh, to. We've been to told. Give me some our, our chats have been told us that me and Incursus have to team up and take part, or else, pretty much. Yeah. Oh, YouTube against <laughs> the world. Yeah, one. Oh, yeah. All right, guys. <laughs> but, well, I'm uh, going to go ahead and talk to guys... my chat for a little bit, and I'll see you guys yeah. next time. Yeah, see you all later, and Bye -bye. see you later in Curses. Later, friends. <laughs> all right, guys. Welcome back. I am sorry for all of the ignoring of chat today. We have had a pretty strong delay, and there's not much I can do about it. We got to be respectful to these competitors here in the tournaments, and we will be doing another one of these coming up here pretty soon, and I think Forts is going to have some good boost of players here, and it's going to be exciting for next time. But for now, remember, we still have our live stream coming up in a few hours. That's 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's uh, three hours from now. We will be playing some more video games. But for now, I will have to see you guys all later. But don't worry, we shall be back soon. As always, have a good one, everyone. And I'll see you guys later. Make sure to join the Discord so you get notifications when we go live in three hours.